the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, welcome. I am AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat McAfee here on Friday, October 8th. I know Twine has his beat. We've got to wait for it to drop and everything. You know what? That's for you, Connor. Wow. And that's for Pat. In honor of Pat, I will not speak over Twine's beat, even though I have a ton of respect for Twine for everything he does. You know, we had a great night last night, guys. A lot of, a lot of good football being played. Not as much in the first half of the Rams Seahawks game. We saw. A punter make maybe the most athletic play we've ever seen a punter make in the history of the NFL. I'm not sure how Pat feels about that, but how Michael Dixon popped this ball up to himself running full speed and then punted again. And now we have a bunch of people that don't know the rules. It seems like a football, right? Yeah, even the rest. So, you know, I want to bring in our, our guy, our guy, Pat McAfee. He's out in San Jose. He's got SmackDown tonight. We know he's, he's doing all right. It's, it's a, a morning game for him, right? Three hours behind us? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Where he is. So, if we can dial him up, could we, uh, Evie and Z, where is old Pat McAfee and what's he doing? What's yeah. up, Pat? How you doing, bud? AJ, how you doing? You look fantastic. Ryder Cup champion, Team America. Let's go, bro. Yeah, I know. I figured I'd, I'd wear this thing a little more comfortable than my uh, my suit and tie type of thing. And I just wanted to, to, to represent. I don't want people to forget about what the U.S. did against the, the European team a couple of weeks ago at Whistling Straits. That was a massacre, wasn't it? Hell yeah. Well, the celebrities lost. The American celebrities, the team you were on, lost. But yeah. that set the tone for the Ryder Cup American team to win, I think. And and I just want to get right into it. The greatest play in football history happened last night. Not just for the brand, by the way. Not just for the brand. And Now, granted, the team did go on to lose. So it doesn't really matter in the end. You know, like I had a completion in a game that we lost by 50. Can't talk about it. You know, kicked off a Super Bowl, we lost, can't fucking talk about it. There are some situations that hopefully have happened in everybody's career that happen in losing efforts that you can't talk about. And I hope that Michael Dixon gets a chance to fucking celebrate in victory lap what he did last night. (laughs) Not only was it Chase Young-esque as he reaches down with one Aussie hand in an Aussie rules football style, bats that thing up to himself as it's spinning on its head after he heard a thump thump, which is the worst sound in the history of punting. That means your shit just got rocked. Son, now somebody came scot-free right up the gut and he had nothing he could do about it, but then he jukes, he jives, he runs, he's tatted, he's sleeved up, and he makes the ultimate decision of punting the ball 68 yards down the field while he is also, in quick little side note here, the man with the hoodie, the hat, the belt strap right there to the right of Michael Dixon, not the short little guy who looks to be a strength coach for sure how yoked up he is. I'm talking about that guy right there with the L. And the thing on his chest, the coach, that's special teams coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams, Joe D. Camillus. Used to be with the Cowboys. He's the one who told me they were going to draft me to the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Actually, a good guy. Kind of fucked me over draft day. Incredible football mind. But he's probably losing his fucking gourd because he kicked this thing two yards down the field. So not only was it incredibly athletic, it was also an outlaw play. Clearly mm. broke some rules, but who gives a fuck? We made some magic, and that's what the brand's all about. I'm incredibly thankful for Michael Dixon, AJ. Okay, so you said he kind of broke some rules. What? What would like what would most punters have done there? Just kept running the ball? Like I feel like punters want to get the ball out of their hands. They want to get rid of it. They don't want to get killed. Okay, so I had a situation like this. It wasn't blocked. I actually dropped the snap. Now, these hands are, you know, diamonds. All right. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I that was literally yeah, the only no, drop no I've ever had. There. We know that. What's, what's that? We had no calluses, very soft, we know. So yeah, you don't want that hard leather ball to, to smack those hands. Cause this thing right here is sandpaper, bro. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. From, right, we don't know don't from what. We don't know what it's from, but yeah, continue. I'm sorry. Well, that's my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was from wow. hand cleaning there. Uh, but yeah, I think the goal was always to potentially get another punt off. Now, I was not confused about him being able to punt it again after it getting blocked because I think we had gone over that situation with Tom McMahon whenever I was with the Indianapolis Colts. There's some of these situations that just come up out of nowhere and you got to hope that you remember them. Fire, fire situations. What's the rules? I always had an idea that I was going to drop kick that thing, by the way, because mm-hmm. the t- tight end never gets out. You can actually drop kick that. So, 
it wasn't really about you know him not knowing the rules. I think it was about him just making a play, letting reactions take over. Nobody knew the rules, though, Pat. Nobody knew the rules. Even Pereira, who they brought in as the rules official, he still has been put out these tweets that I'm still confused from what he is saying, but I know your your old coach, Mitt's dad, has kind of cleared this up for us. Like, What do you think about it? Yeah, and literally the first person – I thought of to text was Tom McMahon because all he does is like smoke meth and read through the rule books and he can get every advantage in his special teams, you know, like that's, he just never sleeps. He's like always in there. So he was the right person. What Pereira said last night, obviously he, he didn't know that you could kick it twice behind the line of scrimmage, but what he missed was exactly what he's saying here in the first tweet, which is lots to clarify on two, uh, two kicks during a play. The new rule clarification states you cannot punt the ball twice from behind the line if the ball has been beyond the line. I misread that. A ball is to be considered illegally kicked if the kicker's entire body and the ball are beyond the line when the ball is kicked. So he literally just said it's an illegal kick. But then he says linemen are not restricted from going downfield after the first kick. So that rule, which is, I thought, potentially broke last night, Nobody other than the outside two gunners, or if it's not a gunner, maybe the two outside ends of the line of scrimmage, whoever the players are, those are the only two that are allowed to leave the line of scrimmage before a ball is kicked. That's the difference between college and the NFL, by the way. In college, you see a lot of punters like roll to their right, and everybody's down the field. You get the ball on the ground, and then the returner can't get it because the field they're already down the field. In the NFL, only two people are allowed to leave the line of scrimmage before the ball is kicked. That's why the hang time punt is much more important because you only have two as opposed to seven people going down. Now, whenever I dropped that snap in Houston, I ran to my right. I was planning on taking that thing to the fucking crib. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that's what I was. That's what I was going to do. I'm going to take yeah. this to the fucking crib. Is what I thought as I was running on an NFL field with I don't know what 21 people faster and more athletic than me. I'd say maybe 19, depending snapper? upon a snapper. Yeah, you're right. I'm more athletic than Overton for sure. I mean, that is not even a, a question there. No, sh- that, that's Overton knows it too. But anyways, you get it. I. I was going to go to the house, and then I realized, like, okay, a six foot five linebacker is somehow faster than me. You know, he's stronger, faster, can jump higher, and he's scary. So I obviously juked him, okay, and then I punted the ball off. Okay. Now, too many linemen are down, this, uh, down the field, though, had to come back, almost got my leg broke on that one. Uh, but I, it was nice to clarify that if it's a second kick, it doesn't matter how far down the field is, uh, it just you have to be behind the line of scrimmage, which Dixon clearly wasn't. Who cares? Yeah. Still an absolute stud. But why wouldn't you now? This makes me think. If I get my PP, you know, my big old PP up there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Personal protector, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody knows that, Pat. No, I agree. But, yeah, my PP. If I get him and they're in like a six box, okay? You mean he can you explain like that six, quick? Six, what's that? Can you explain that quick? Like all these, you know, a lot of people don't know exactly what you're saying. Okay, six box means both gunners are doubled, which means probably hold up, which means they're probably going for a return. So you look out at the gunners, you see two on each of them. You go, okay, this is probably a six box. This is when I would creep up a yard in the back. So I would steal a yard off the back. Normally you line up at like 14 and a half. When I see that, I go to 13 and a half, maybe even 12, depending upon who we're playing against. So I'm stealing three yards. Hey, does your snapper know? Do you have to signal your snapper? Do you have to tell him so it's not high? Like, how's that work? No, 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 no. He's good. He's good. Okay. Bring it, just bring it high, bring it low. Just that one time in Houston, I fucking dropped it. I don't know. That, 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 is a, that is a problem. But I would do that. And if you saw that there was a six-man box, though, have your PP back up. Let me go ahead and kick that thing right off his back, right back to myself. And then I can just, you know what I mean? Everybody can just run down the field and we can do that college punt. I, I mean, that might not be consistent. Somebody will have to work on it, but... Uh, last night was electrifying. Michael Dixon stole the show. Our fucking same game parlay didn't hit AJ because uh, a man who hasn't missed a game in fucking 10 years, 159 or 149 straight snaps, all of a sudden fucking hurts his goddamn middle finger. Terribly painful, I would assume. Yeah. And also, that's the finger that lasts on the ball the longest when you're trying to throw it, so it's a pretty big deal. Uh, but our same game parlay might be potentially completely fucked after Russ's finger started looking like yours, AJ. Well, yeah, a lot of finger talk last night in this game. I know you guys were aware of it. Matthew Stafford has his index finger is kind of messed up, right? He has a tape job on that. 
Um, you know, Russell Wilson's fingers dangling. It's hanging. I hear there's a surgery where they can put a pin in there. I don't know how long he may miss. Who knows? We'll see. Hey, Pete Carroll says Russell is a great healer. That's right. right. He is. Connor, do, do you guys know what that means exactly? How does that? Do, you, do we have something water. to reference? Can we reference this? Did he do this earlier in his career? Well, I mean, he spends a million dollars on his body per year, not just all time. So, I mean, when he says he's a great healer, he means hey, Russell's going to do everything he can to be on the field next Sunday, and he will. He also drinks healing water. That's he had right. a concussion right. one time, and he drank the concussion water. Oh, it was fine the next day. Fountain of you. Where yeah. do you find that? Where well, do you find I don't know. If you, I don't know if you can. It's very high pH level. Yeah. A lot of bubbles in there, and it, but it does. It get, it got rid of his con- concussion in like four days. Well, so I, I decided, Pat, to. When I, I open up, uh, you know, Twitter or something, check it out. A lot of finger talk being directed my way because of people think my hands or fingers may be messed up. I think they, they look beautiful compared to a lot they're, of NFL players. Disgusting. And it seems very timely with the whole Urban Meyer situation, too. Oh. That you have documented whoa, well whoa, in whoa. here. We're just talking about a, a, a coach and how a team is going to try to respond <laughs> and come back from you know, something that uh, may be a bit distracting off the field. I don't know. We'll see how they do against Mike Vrabel and the Titans this week. What's up, lady? Won't give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy, dude. How, what if they win? What if? I mean, he's going to have to, right? Like, he, winning cures all. I don't know if it cures this, but winning definitely helps uh, a lot. But going back to the Seahawks, what are they going to do? Geno Smith came in and looked good. First Ball, off, great. I heard someone say, oh, he threw a, a terrible pick to end it. No, Lockett fell down. Yeah. He either, did he trip yeah. on his own he feet? His nah, own people, hey. People are saying that was defensive uh, pass interference or holding or something like that. Actually, there seems to be a little bit of a controversy on that particular play on Tyler Lockett, allegedly. Now, Geno Smith, nine-year vet. Let's remember this. Out of West Virginia. He's been there, done that, and how his career started was not like a a launching point. It was not like a great start to his career. There's some embarrassing moments. He's gone out there behind Russell Wilson and become incredible at the coin toss when they need him. Mm -hmm. He'll come out and say, Hales. You know what I mean? Or Ted. <laughs> he'll, he'll, uh, he will come out and do that. He will win that thing. And just the, the composure, the confidence, the delivery, it was awesome to kind of get a, a chance to see a guy who's kind of been disappeared for, what, five, six years almost from the spotlight getting a chance to show up and show out, and he did that. And, uh, you know, Russell Wilson was keeping his helmet on just in case, but I think deep down inside he knew Geno was going to play well. I think he knew Geno was going to play well. Now people are talking about, Russ not playing for a bit, them stinking, especially in the NFC West. He just lost at home. Why are you going to stink when Geno played like he did, though? Gino, I, I thought Geno came in and, and looked great. He seemed yeah. under control. He had everything going the right – like, I, I like what Geno could do. Diggs, what did you have? I was – to uh, Geno Smith played great. To Pat's point on what the internet was saying, I thought personally, like when I saw it, Lockett did get touched a little bit. I don't know if it was enough for a flag, but when he did get touched, he tried selling it and went down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. AJ, come desk, on, dude. desk already. AJ. Things, which caused the interception it, it's not like a thing like this whole desk situation like i i try to not bring attention to it because i don't want to like just drive into the ground but it is driving me crazy like, this is so stupid like you can't move up here i'm <laughs> just can? telling you it's I'm, the, I'm the most moving host it's gone in the from, history of hosts okay well it's gone from it's gone from being like oh this is fun i'm annoyed to like i'm just pissed off like this is stupid why do i come here with the, the, this desk this is gonna go. Like some of this stuff is gonna have to. What do you mean, AJ? Get Why? it together. What are you dude. talking about? Oh, you Those got, are all I walked gifts. in what before you we Jesus came on. Christ on there. <laughs> huh? Interesting. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I mean, Carson, I need to get some of Carson's pregame oh, music. I saw God. him talking True. about what he listens to pregame. So, yes, of course, Jesus is my guy. But that this is can't just, be uh, real. What do you mean? A lot of guys listen to music like that before yeah. the games, like inspirational, lift me up. We, they don't have to be like you and listen to Pantera and bang our heads off the wall. I do not. That's not what I listen to. <laughs> I just would like to let everybody know that I do not listen to Pantera. Okay, I'm just – but uh, according to Wish TV, Wednesdays, Anthony Calhoun gets a chance to chat with Carson Wentz. AC, Anthony Calhoun, legend around Indiana. He asked Carson Wentz what his go-to music is before the games. Listen to a lot of worship music on game day, pretty much from the moment I wake up. Um, the worship Come music's on. on, whether I'm listening to a sermon or a message or something, um, but I'm listening to worship music. It really just helps my mind kind of remember it's just a game. Don't make it too big. It's a, it's a game exactly. that God's I agree. really gifted me with and the ability to go play. So uh, worship music, plus it's usually on a Sunday, a day of worship anyway. So uh, definitely helps get my mind in the right in the right mindset. Okay, so you got to tell us the groups. Like, who are you listening to? A little bit of Hillsong, uh, Maverick guy. City, Bieber's Elevation. Bunch of other people. For me, really, it goes back to college. Let's um, go. Just, it's always kind of my my game day. I don't want to call it a ritual. I'm not superstitious about it, but it just helps me really get my mind in the in the right mindset. Well, he's saying hail marys because he's going out to fucking kill himself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Every time he gets out there. But I, I you know, 
That, that's like fake, right? Why is it, wait, fake. why is this not real, though? Why do you not think this is real? That just sounds like an answer he thought would be the right answer to give, you know, like to, to his people. There's uh, no way. Okay, like. I mean, I believe him. Do you guys believe him? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even Sue's in the offseason on Sunday. Moves. I don't believe him, Pat. <laughs> I'm 100 percent. Okay, believe. and what do you think he's listening to, Diggs? Listen, I just like Pat said, like he gave a great reason, like he's saying Hell Marys to go play like that. You don't listen to preacher music or whatever it's called, <laughs> and then go Worship. play football like that. I don't know. He though. is listening to Pantera. The way he plays football, there is no God in there. Okay? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. He is a maniac out there, and maybe that is why he's getting like right with the Lord yeah. as he tries to throw himself into. 10 car crashes a game or whatever drive almost at this point but that's just i don't know how we got to this point i don't know why we got to this this early aj okay but i was hoping we didn't have to cover this because i saw that last night and i was like there's no way this guy's telling the truth right well now. a big reason we got to that early is because in about two and a half three minutes we have coach jb coming on i assume this yeah. is the same kind of stuff jb listened to before he coaches in games didn't do don't you yeah i mean these bitch made cats may be talking to the Lord. <laughs> I love this guy. I can't wait to hear the conversation that you direct with him. I literally just had a Tesla drop me off some dope at the front door of this hotel. I'm feeling really good. Can't wait to watch and listen to you and Coach JB have a conversation. So you're out in San Jose. It's it's very nice out there, right? Beautiful. It is cool. It's not hot though. I mean it's like fifty degrees. I thought we hmm. were supposed to come out here Whoa. to like super warm town. You know what I mean? That's not the case, but it is gorgeous. I might be in the richest part of America. There was 14 Lambos in front of the hotel I was staying at last Damn, night. 14 geez. of them. Parked on the street. What is that? Are all the wrestlers get Lambos for the week? No, no, no. I, I, I got my own hotel. I got my own hotel. Room. Oh, you don't, you don't want to stay with them? Well, I don't want to sleep in a double bed ever. <laughs> mm. Oh, they get smart. <laughs> they give you a roommate? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's like I'm pretty low on the totem pole over there, so I'm, there's a lot of hotel rooms that have to be taken, and I'm just like, you know what, I'll just I'll buy a suite for myself in a place that has 14 Lambos in the front because that would probably be more comfortable, make me feel better. I have a balcony I can go smoke on, okay, shout out to California, wow. I have no whole thing, but even in the richest places, fucking six pillows deep, cuz, this big brain stacked them flat like fucking oh, I, geez. I couldn't sleep a lick out of this place, but it's really nice. Really nice, really nice. Yeah, it is nice. I, so going back to Seattle real quick before JB, I know their defense is what giving up a massive amount of yards. They're they're on pace to give up the most amount of yards ever for a defense. But what about their how many? What are they? Where are their rankings on their points allowed? Because that's all that matters. That's all I care about. Do you guys know? I'll uh, pull it up right now. So, okay, I know yardage is always something that they they use for like total defense. How many yards you give up? First off, every offense feel like gets tons of yards every game if you're not terrible. So giving up yards doesn't matter, but how do you bow up in the red zone? Do you get turnovers? How many points do you give up? That's all I care about. What, what they're are, giving up tw – uh, they're 21st in the league in opponent points per game. Seattle? Yeah, not guess? great. Not great. Not but great. you know what? It, I mean, the yardage thing is overblown. Like, I, I, I get it. You don't want a team to just go up and down the field on you. But still, like, who cares? All that matters is the points. I know Belichick's always been big on that too. Like, hey, how many points do we give up? We don't care about yardage. We don't care about whatever analytics you have. If we hold them to less points, we're going to win the game. Well, That's the game. Who yeah. can score the most points, right? I mean, what are we trying to do? I, I do think there are some stats, and we've gone in on the stats, I think, mm -hmm. more than most about how they can paint any picture you want them to paint or whatever. But the the points against being in 21st, they had two, what, big fourth down stops early in that game last night? Two mm -hmm. big time fourth Yep, real, yeah. cage, real cagey match yeah, in the, the first half. The internet was saying McVay was the worst uh, coach of all time. I mean, Who said on. that? You, you know. know. You know who. Wait, uh, the internet? Are you, are you pointing to one person? A lot of analytics, guys. Oh, I think I may know who you're talking about. And speaking of analytics, <laughs> our first guest today, he is, he's a, I mean, this dude is an absolute dynamo. Just a, a coach who knows how to handle whatever player is going through, wherever they may be. Great recruiter. We know all that. So please put your hand together for Coach JB. Yeah! What up, man? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we got you. JB, did you watch the game last night? Seahawks, Rams. What do you think of the whole punt situation that Pat called the, the greatest punt play in, in all of all of mankind, I guess, to ever happen? Like, what do you think of the game? What do you think of like uh, the Seahawks and Rams moving forward? <laughs> greatest man, play in football history, not just dude. punt play. All right, fuck I got to show you this. What in the fuck is this? Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, where is this coming from? This is a fucking youth being coached by some youth coaches. Jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. He's right. I mean, that this should be illegal. Dude, 
this is why coaching is as fucking shitty as it is right now. That's why we have a targeting call called every fucking day. <laughs> Well, you know what, JB, so, JB, no, (laughs) see, this is the thing, like, okay, JB, this is a good question for you. People think, like, oh, we got to make these kids tougher. we got to toughen them up. Can you, you can't just all all of a sudden beating the hell out of a kid and bullying them. It's not going to make them tougher on the football field. No, someone just tweeted that to me. They're like, that was a, that was a weed the week out. I said, no, it's not. There's control drills for that. They're called board drills. They're called fucking, there's, there's a lot of angle tackle drills. There's different things you can control and find that out real easily. Like, it's funny, you guys are talking about the sermon music and all that. It's funny that everybody that listens to sermon music, why are they like the most overrated motherfuckers in the country? <laughs> <laughs> who, who else Who else you got on that? How about Carr is the biggest Good walk shot. by faith, not by sight guy. And he fucking is curling up back there like, holy shit. But anyway. Right, hold on. But, all right, what, I, I, hold on, JP. Can I ask AJ, I didn't watch the show. Huh? Can I ask a couple questions real quick before we go there? I think, by the way, from somebody, from somebody that isn't in the football community, that got dropped in the football community in college, the toughening up and weeding out the, the week, I think from my observation, conditioning periods can do that too. Because I think you can learn a lot about somebody mentally. So I don't think you have to have somebody run into a double team and get decleated six straight times to make them tough. Like I, I don't think that's a good idea. Now, I do apologize for interrupting whatever you're about to say that was going to be amazing. I No need to bury Carson Wentz, though, okay? He's got the Lord with him, JB. Only <laughs> fucking God favorite. can judge him, not you and me. Jesus. I know. He's a fan favorite. Only God can judge. So uh, I can, too. AJ, to answer your question, man, I was in a big whiskey can. rebrand meeting, and I didn't get a chance to watch the fucking game. So I apologize. I didn't get to see the kick. I just saw Pat's retweets because it had something to do with a kick. You know, he's all over that shit. So I was trying to see what was going on. But I listened to his points about six man box and all that. It's similar to coaching AJ, as you know, you know, if fuck you, you got, you got more than we can block in the box. It's similar. We're going to take advantage of it. Special teams the same way as a head coach. You got kind of got to know all those things, but we're not going to do that fucking double team drill. You just saw. No, I mean, I don't know what that poor kid that keeps getting blasted Jeez. is supposed to do. I would assume the only way out of there is to just start throwing punches at everybody. Find the coach, <laughs> chase the coach down, try to fight that dude just to get out of the drill. How else are you going to end it? I would it? just take the next guy's fucking knee out. I would just put yeah. my helmet right on his fucking crown of his, of his knee. Bow. In right. his fucking AJ, head. what did you say? AJ, what did you say whenever we were talking about um, either Oklahoma drills or bull in the ring? You said, I didn't like it, but... If survival is the only way to to win this thing, I have to kill everybody. Is what you said. I think that is your exact thought. I mean, not my exact thought, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, you got to survive. You're trying to survive however you can, man. Okay. That that poor kid getting double teamed by the whole team. Maybe you just start kicking him in the balls. That's the only, another great move that'll work too in a real street fight. I guess I don't know. Where do you hey, go? You mentioned about uh, Russell Wilson healing and all that shit. That he's a great healer. Yeah. I think there is a truth to that. Uh, knowing Pete as well, I do. You know, there's there's bleeders and there's scabbers. Have you ever had your nose broken? How much do you bleed? I, I truly believe that there's bleeders out there that are weak as fuck. They bleed. And then there's guys that bleed for a second. You sob it up. It's done. And they start the scabbing process. I've always been a guy that doesn't bleed that much. I'm, I'm already over it. I'm ready to move on. AJ, I think you're the same way. I saw the whole face blood thing. I, I just don't know. I think there's bleeders and there's scabbers. When you're a bleeder, I think you're 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 gonna pretty much be out next week. You're, you're fucking. Now we already know you're soft as shit. You're already using that. <laughs> so what is Russell? Is Russell a bleeder or a scabber? I think he's a scabber, man, because he's never missed a game. So yeah. we can't really. You know what I'm saying? We I only judge you by how you are with me. I mean, that motherfucker's never missed a game. But I do know quarterback play like you, AJ. My fingers are fucked. Yeah. Uh, they've all been broken, twisted every which way. I mean, look at these fat fucks. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if uh, you, it's hard to throw a football with a fucked up finger, especially your index finger, man, where you throw the spiral from. Yeah, I we, mean, it's, it's we got a lot it's, of things going on with fingers all around the, the country right now that oh, people shit. are trying Booty to figure out. Fingers. No question. Uh, Pat, what do you got? Hey, <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, I mean, AJ wants to get to Urban Meyer, and no. we have to because uh, you had a take on him last week about him chasing happiness, you know. Goes from hey, Bowling can I give you a quote Florida. where you tell me, AJ, uh, 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 Pat, can, you, can I quote something from Urban Meyer that's going to blow your mind? Sure. I mean, I didn't think we were going to get right into Urban Meyer, but, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do it. Let's do it, yeah. If what you are doing isn't working, change it. Don't blame the E. Choose a better R. Don't hold on to what's holding you back. You got to be shitting me. Is that Gandhi? 
That's his quote. Well, you better stop changing fucking finger and booty old motherfucker. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You can't, you can't tell me. You, you can't make this shit up, man. Hey, by the way, I got breaking news, Pat. I spoke to Dan Orlovsky, oh, and God. as as <laughs> as as thoughts, I think that dude's a great human being. Like I said on your show. Yeah. And, um, that's it. It's in confidence. We won't go anywhere. I told him that, and uh, you know, great conversation. And I told you, disagreements create great conversation. Hey, you're right. Mike McCarthy used to say, JB, conflict is good. He would always tell us that <laughs> conflict is good because he wants you, hey, don't sweep it under the rug. Let's get it out in the open. Let's talk about it. Why are okay. so many coaches so scared to do that, though? Man, that's a good question. That's, that's, that's true shit, man, because it, once you do that, you have about – you got 22 guys that are supposed to be headed in the same direction at the same time. Now they're headed in fucking every which direction because they don't understand where the head coach is coming from, and now there's a bunch of debate out there and second guessing instead of conviction and this is the way we're going this is the way we're doing it whether you're a democratic style leader or a dictatorship style leader you know i kind of think i know you're gonna laugh but i'm a more of a democratic style even though you see this dictator looking motherfucker on tv that you don't really see the rest of the time i actually take input from staff players those type of things because i want to make sure that i have the heartbeat of the team intact and i understand okay this is how this is what makes this go. I'm not going to sit there and say, nah, fuck that. We're going this way no matter what. And our team's not feeling it. Like Pat was talking to um, Coach the other day. He's like, hey, he could come in and talk to you. Like coaches say there's open door policy, AJ, like you were saying, but that's not always true. Like these fuckers don't ever fucking even see you again once they recruit you. And they walk right by you, and it's like, holy fuck, now you wonder why we have so many kids entering the transfer portal, so many kids entering decommitment tweets on Twitter because the coach – you know, they're, they're, they're car salesmen at the end of the day, and there's only a handful of genuine ones that truly have the kids' best interest at heart. Everything else, and I tell these kids every day, you guys are in a meat market, man, and it's a fucking, you're the pieces of meat. And that's just unfortunate. That's the truth. And these kids got to do a better job on, you know, turning over rocks and figuring that out, finding out who they really are going to play for. And Fascinating it, stuff it, there, because I don't think that's just in football, too. I think that's in life. Like, you have to understand who you're talking to or who you're trying to, you know, kind of do business with. I think that is a massive ordeal. But whenever you're given power, you know, power trips, and whenever you are the gatekeeper, which a lot of these college coaches are potentially, you can kind of get maybe too arrogant or too egotistical. But hopefully everybody will be able to figure it out. No more shots at Urban Meyer from this, uh, especially in the butt. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. uh, for this particular show. So we're going to move on from that old thing. Yes. Um, whenever you look at this weekend, are you going to pick every game again? Are you picking every college football game again like you did last week? I feel like that was a maybe some, a learning situation. Yeah, uh, you know, the week before I went 4-1. and one. Last week I just shitted on you. I apologize, Pat, everybody over there. Anyone that listened to me, you should be castrated. I apologize. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to pick every team. I didn't know I fucking forget I'm on a time limit. I, I know you want games. I know, you, I know you're you. You're not want- on a time limit, JB. JB, you're not on a time limit. Picking every game, though, like me and AJ are going to do it for football in the NFL, but we're not saying people should bet on it. When you come out and say, hey, I got upset of the week, and then you, let, you list off 10 upsets that are potentially going to happen, people are going to be like, hey, your record fucking stinks, guy. Like, that, you're just kind of setting yourself up is what I'm saying. That, not to yeah. have a time limit. I'm just saying I'm a you're setting yourself up there. I'm a competitor, man. I'm going to have to start evaluating three or four real teams this year, and then I'm going to pick them, and I'm going to fucking get every one of them right, and I'm going to tell all of Twitter to fucking eat a dick up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch football like that no more. I got to really break it down, and if I did that, it's just hard, man. I want to know really, if there is there a college – better handicapper out there that's really crushing it because i would really like to find out i don't think there is because of the transfer portal because of their 17 to 21 year old kids who can't even clean their dorm room a little less we're gonna debank on these motherfuckers on saturdays and pick them nah it's hard to pick college football teams when you're dealing with you know adolescents and uh i don't know man it's hard to pick jb you know, jb I used to think this as well. I had, you know, obviously growing up in Pittsburgh, a lot of Italians, you know, and the Italians, it's kind of in their blood to fucking pick Shout games out. and shit like that. 
So I would have friends that were like, hey, your West Virginia team's covering machines or whatever, which we were, I think, for like three years straight, uh, uh, maybe two years straight. I, I forget what it was. We were on a run for people, that team that we had, because nobody knew we existed, and we beat the fucking brakes off everybody. But every time that I would have a conversation with my friends about it, I'm like, I don't even know where the fuck the ball is going. Like, you know, at that age, I had no clue if the ball was going. Right. Like, I have no clue where it's going. I have no good if I'm going to have a good day or a bad day. I don't know how you guys are predicting it, and that's why – you know, college is insane, and to be honest, all of gambling is fucking very difficult. Jim. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's why they call it gambling, man. I mean, I found <laughs> that's, that's gambling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, what games you want me to pick? I got a few in mind. What, there's a couple big ones, right? There's, what's uh, yeah. the big big OU ten? Texas. OU Texas, my boy Sark. I, I, I. So Sark, every time Sark's taking a head coaching job, if you haven't followed his career, a uh, good friend of mine. When he took the UW job, he beat Pete Carroll at SC right when he left SC. Now, he didn't leave Oklahoma, obviously. He left Alabama, but I'm taking Sark to get it done, man. It's a minus three. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma's minus three. I'm taking Sark to get his statement victory at his new program this week. I just don't think Oklahoma's that great. I think Texas is in a building stage, but I think they're buying into Sark's culture. I think Texas is going to shock Oklahoma. It's only minus three, uh, but I think he's going to do what he did to get to Pete Carroll. And uh, what about Iowa Penn State? That's a big one here for Ty. Yeah. Oh, is it? Who? Which game? Iowa Penn State. We know Ty's a big Iowa fan. Yeah, I got. So this is some. <laughs> here, I give you some. I'm doing some more due diligence. You know, I don't want to come on here and be a fucking slapdick. No, so no, you're good. Hey, or or shitbird. Shitbird, yeah, shitbirds. The, you know, no coming back from that shit. Uh, <laughs> I was minus one and a half, but just so we know, Ty. James Franklin's beat him six out of seven. Um, just so we're clear. And Franklin seems to have Kirk's number, but but uh -oh. it's being it's having it, you know, in Iowa, those fucking pink locker rooms for the visitor. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take Iowa winning two years in a row. Wow. <laughs> They're only minus one and a half. I was minus one and a half, so it's a tough one. Like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna take fucking Penn State to cover? Like, fuck. No, he might as well pick one, so. <laughs> I guess. Connor, what do you have? Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, Justin Fields came out and he said, you know, he doesn't even know if he's going to be around in 10 to 15 years when they were asking him about being the franchise guy. And then you hear some players coming out for the Bengals saying how, you know, Burrow's the franchise guy. How do you know in a, in a you know, locker room or in a uh, building if you have a guy that you can lean on for, you know, multiple years? Is there something or, you know, a moment where you kind of – something clicks and you know, like, okay, this dude is legit? Man, you could wish in one hand, shit in the other one, see what fills up first. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't believe you ever can bank on any of these cats. I don't trust not zero of them because you're a fucking shitty left tackle away from getting your shit blown out. Um, mm -hmm. But to answer your question more fairly, I believe there is a true it factor when you play the quarterback position. I believe when Justin Herbert walked into the locker room, you heard stories that, damn, this motherfucker has it. Uh, Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, of course, Brady. They knew as a rookie that, damn, this motherfucker is different. If we can keep him healthy. I've heard the same thing about Burrow. Um, I've heard the same thing about a few others that they got the it factor. And I believe that the team knows that. But this is the part about it that you're asking. What? Who's going to be the team in 10 to 15 years? It ain't going to be any of these fuckers that are in the locker room right now. It's going to be a new rotational of group of guys every year when this, with free agency and everything that goes about the NFL. So it's the management franchise, the owner that's asking that question, not really the team, because that team's going to rotate, man. So, you know, as you know, running backs last a year or two, where you got ride outs that are going to go try to get the big money bag. And you got guys rotating through this league. And it's more of a managerial question, in my opinion, that if he has the it factor or not. You know, a lot of people thought fucking Ryan Leaf had it, too. Coach J.B. Diggs has something for you here. <laughs> J.B., Arkansas and Ole Miss play this weekend. <laughs> they both got dog-walked by Alabama and Georgia last weekend. What's it like? I mean, I know it rarely ever happened to you, but what's it like coming off a, a blow-off loss that your team played in? And then did you see Lane talk about getting his popcorn ready? Yeah, I – I had these two teams that both need huge bounce back games. I know it's tough when both teams I, I I'm gonna roll with Lane on a on a big in a big way this week. I think they win by a touchdown. But this is the thing. Why the reason why is I think Lane's uh, two years more established in there. I think Arkansas is rebuilding that thing still, even though they started off hot. 
I don't believe they played anyone. They, they played a rebuilding Texas. They played an A&M a- a- team that, you know, Jimbo Fisher's making fucking a hundred million dollars for what reason? I have fucking no idea. Um, and and I think they don't they didn't really play anyone. Um, so I, I think Ole Miss is going to win just because their culture is a little more established. Um, and I saw the popcorn deal. You know, Lane's great on social media, man. I, I give him a lot of kudos because a lot of people will stay away from it. They won't they won't do it. It's unprofessional. It's, un, you know, it's too political. It's administration frowns on it. You're a public figure. I give him kudos. I give him credit to those for that for that fact, man, that he's on there fucking around playing with the fans. I is think that him? Is that huh? him or a team? Oh, that's him. Yeah, I bet it's him. Oh, he, 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 oh, he's a recruiter now. That motherfucker knows what he's doing. These, these young kids. Now, but see, Nick's so established with his program and his staff. He doesn't need to do. He doesn't need to go on social media. It's, it's, it is what it is, right? He flies a helicopter on your fucking high school campus, and you're like, oh fuck, this is Dick Saban on my campus. <laughs> so he don't need to do the social media. Lane does it, and I give him credit, man. He's still got his finger on the heartbeat of these youngsters in social media world and stuff. So he's he's out there, and I, I love what he does, man. What what he did with fucking uh, you know, what's his name, Michael fucking uh, what's it, Maybomb or whatever. Um, what's Will his name? Bond. Will Bond's fucking slapstick guy. Like, who, did he fucking <laughs> play O line or something? I don't know about. Did Michael Will Bond play somewhere? I don't. Do know. you know what he said about me? What would he say? No. Yeah, Mike Wilbon, the day I retired on Pardon the Interruption, you know, or uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, Pardon the Interruption. He said that I basically, I, in in other words, the way I took it the day of, I don't know if he meant it that way, but basically tell me I have no friends. My friends should be holding my jersey on until I get, like, the train goes off the tracks, basically. And it was a bad decision, this whole thing. And then obviously where we are now, you know, just a couple years later, that turned out to be wrong. But I do appreciate his years of journalism. JB, I appreciate his years of journalism. He did not play anywhere. Just looked it up. He would have been a good three technique, though. Maybe. <laughs> Man, he couldn't play on the three technique. He has the worst body shape on <laughs> national TV. Like, he wow, has titties that are, like, he, 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 you know, when your chin touches your nipple, you got a fucking problem. <laughs> and there's a problem, and he's going to be on there talking about motherfuckers. And it's like, hold up, dude. You're talking about a dude that has been the Raiders head coach, SC's head coach, Tennessee's head coach. And he was the youngest cat at doing it. And I understand there is nepotism involved. You can't tell him. I wish we had a whole show on that. I would fucking uh, show that. But you can't say he's. it's not that because of who his daddy was that he didn't get certain jobs. I'm not going to sit here and say that's not true. That is true. But at the same time, um, you know, I believe that he has, you know, there's a reason he's doing it. Like he's a hell of an OC. He's a hell of a play caller. Now, can he prove to be a hell of a head coach? I think he's on the path of doing it. Um, but at the same time, he's got to have that statement win. Last year, he was real close to beating a great Alabama team. This year, you know, he didn't show up. Hey, Coach JB, we appreciate your time. We have one more from Ty here before we get to our first break. So what's up, Ty? Yeah, Coach JB, I know you're not a huge uh, Oklahoma guy. You think they're frauds. But do you think that Lincoln Riley is going to be the next guy who gets an NFL job? Or do you think that's kind of going to slow down a little bit with all the shit that's going on with Urban? Man, I, I, I don't know how to say it. Like, these guys aren't fucking NFL guys. They don't, they're not, they have no reason, no clue. They don't have an idea. If you heard Jimmy Johnson tell Urban Meyer when he took the job, like, listen, Urban's like, hey, man, I heard this is a different world. Jimmy Johnson said, uh, no, it's a different fucking galaxy. <laughs> and it's a different galaxy. You can't break it down better than Jimmy Johnson did, who's, by the way, only one of two, Pete Carroll, that saw, actually won a natty and a Super Bowl. You can't really break it down better than that. They're, these guys aren't ready for the NFL. And all these fucking Michael Wilbon fucking titty chin fucks can't understand. They don't have a clue on how this profession really operates. Like, you, go, you don't go from recruiting your blood life to an NFL franchise and having to play with your recruits. So you, don't, you didn't recruit nobody there. Urban Meyer's finding that out right now. That's why he's fingering booty hole. Like, you don't understand. There's a huge difference in this thing. You can't go from recruiting your blood life to now accepting what's in your locker room and having to say, oh, fuck, I, I got to play with this. And then you got you kind of see a guy's real grit. And is he really in for the long run? And you're seeing to me, I kind of equated this and I know I'm running long. I, I'm, I'm trying to equated this to players that that I cut. They cut themselves. They never get cut. They do things to cut themselves. And. Urban Meyer is cutting himself. He's sabotaging himself. He, you can't sit here and tell me that that motherfucker don't have a bo- more of a better resourceful team around him that allowed that motherfucker to drive to Columbus 
and finger booty a motherfucker. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> There's no way in the world. You can't tell me you put yourself in that position as Urban Meyer. Hey. You cannot sit here and tell me he's that dumb of a dude. He ain't. And for him to do what he did, I had a, I had a podcast called Spineless. I just think it's spineless. And I think his whole situation is spineless for what he did. You know, putting his wife out there who's backed him up from all these fucking so-called sicknesses and all this shit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's pretty spineless. But uh, who am I, man? You know, he'll probably be the new SC coach in fucking two months. Hey, no, you, <laughs> you are Coach JB. And guess what? We cannot wait till next Friday to yep. dive back into everything, all of your opinions. JB, hey, we really appreciate picks? your what time, man. Picks real quick? Oh, yeah, what are your picks wait, wait. quickly? Iowa? Oh, I, got, I, got, I got Ole Miss. I got... Uh, Georgia's beat Auburn eight out of ten. They've won four in a row, making five. Georgia's on a mission, um, and I also got LSU ending K Kentucky's five and zero run. So, awesome! Hey, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Coach JB. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. that'd be good. Pat out here on the West Coast. Don't fuck around. This uh -oh. is uh, you're in Fogtown, man. That's a shitty ass fucking. Oh. Hey, San Jose is like fucking Kansas to Californians, just so you know. Okay. I just got my weed delivered to me by a Tesla. Dude, this place is awesome. Yeah, I could have had the homie deliver some weed to you last night. <laughs> <laughs> JB, thank you so much. Yeah. We look forward to next Friday. Pat, good work. You're, I mean, he, he has a point. I guess he does have a point. He could have sent one of his guys over for you, but we're going to have to get out to our first break here uh, of the show. We have Dawson Knox coming on at 115, oh, Aaron sorry. Jones at 235. Wow. It's going to be a fun show, so stick around. This is Channel 82, I believe, still, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mad Dog Sports. <laughs> <Radio. laughs> Mac B Show. I'm AJ Hawk. Sitting in for Pat. He's with us from San Jose for the whole show and after hours. Can't wait, Pat. Come on back. had a chance to coach one of the smartest humans to ever play in the NFL and Andrew Luck. And I've told this story before where he made a check in the OTAs in the walkthrough, like the first one he was at, that the rest of the team didn't even know what it was. It was his first day on the practice field, his first day of practice, and he like checked out of a blitz. Was it at that, was that true? And it was it at that moment you're like, okay, we got like, we got the guy. Like, is that immediately how that thing happened? And did that thing actually happen with Andrew Luck? Yeah, so he shows, finally shows up and he's missed the lion's share of the whole off season. No off-season program, no OT. He's made one rookie mini camp, and then he's gone. And he finally shows up. We get out to practice, and we're like you said, we're we're in a walkthrough. And BA calls a play, and he goes to the line of scrimmage. He's getting everything set up, and all of a sudden it was alert, alert, opposite, opposite. Makes us check, and Ty, Reggie, Dwayne Allen, everybody in the back. You know, we had the whole offense over here, the whole defense over here, three lines and chains. I spent the whole day, get the F back, get the F back. I was the get back coach. And all of a sudden he rips out this, this check, check, alert, alert, you know, and changes the whole play, changes the protection. You know, we go from a run to pass, pass to run. And there, and everybody's like, did he, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> and what is that? We had to, we had to blow the whistle, get him back in the huddle. Cause nobody knew what he was checking to. And we're figuring, okay. This guy is a genius. He is a brainiac. <laughs> TJ definitely tripped you, by the way. No doubt. No doubt. No. How do you feel? I, about I, I, but I was questioning myself actually a little bit because uh, I stepped in the pocket to Cam got a good rush coming off my left, and AJ Dillon was running a, uh, an angle round was wide open for a touchdown. I really stepped up to move away from Cam and to throw it to him. When I was about to throw it to him, I felt you know getting tripped. And, it, you know, it's one of those awful things. The only thing worse than getting tripped like that is getting stepped on, like trying to get out from center and then you're falling down. It looks really awful. It looks super unathletic. This one looks slightly more athletic, not much. Um, but what got me was I got up and I immediately went to the white cap and was like, that's got to be a trip, right? <laughs> and he was like, I don't know. I'm not sure. And so when he was hemming and hawing, he throws the penalty. And then I'm not sure if he's talking to New York or, or upstairs a replay. But the defensive guys start saying, now you trip yourself. You trip yourself. Joe Hayden saying that. Sutton saying that. Edmund saying that. And for a second, it started creeping in and go, maybe I did. <laughs> maybe I did trip myself. And then when he picked up the flag, they still hadn't shown the replay yet, uh, uh, you know, on the Jumbotron. He picked the flag up, and I was thinking, man, is that what it's come to? I'm in my 17th year, and I'm tripping myself, believing that I actually got tripped. And it was a real low moment for me. A few, <laughs> a, a tough couple seconds kind of turning and walking back to the huddle. 
Then I heard the booze ran down, and I looked up, and I was like, okay. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Jeez. It was such a rush of just joy and, and relief that I wasn't that unathletic guy yet who trips himself and thinks somebody tripped him. Oh, we are back. I am AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat McAfee. I don't know why he has the big eyeballs right there. What's going on with Pat for the serious listeners? He's really staring intently through the camera. What's happening, man? You all right? It sounded like there was no sound there from my on my end. I, I I couldn't hear a thing. I thought maybe the show just completely crashed back there. But I'm, I'm it's great to be back. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to have you back. What do you think about JB? You think his picks are gonna gonna play out the way he thinks so? Oh man, who gives a fuck? I mean, I, I enjoy, I just enjoy JB coming yeah. in and letting it eat. You know what I mean? I'm happy to hear him and Dan Orlovsky have put the swords aside. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. I got a text this morning. I will say this: I got a text from Orlovsky that said, uh, "You have JB's number," and I was like, "I do, yeah, I do." And he was like, uh, "Can you send that to me?" And I was like, "Well, let me see here." So I had a nice chat with JB this morning over here. It's nice to know that they had a conversation. They're Bygones be bygones. Maybe. What was the That's issue? With, what, what was the issue between them, though? What exactly happened that they had to have a personal call? Well, JB has been um, JB has been uh, rather loud yeah. in hilarious fashion about Orlovsky stinking at his job. I believe. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> what happened, dude? I replaced these batteries ten minutes ago, right before I got on the show, and now my my headphones are dead. I can't hear anything. Somehow I'm able to do it every single day, huh. every single day. But somehow we well, you know why because you put dead. dead batteries back in these boxes. There's <laughs> 15 down. batteries laying there's around a, over here. There's a system. There's a system. If the if the plus side is facing up on the thing, good. If it's facing down, they're dead. Pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, not really. Who's supposed to know this this uh, this whole formula you have for these things? Let me see if this one works. Hopefully, I can get some sound back in my ears. <laughs> me. Oh, look at this. It's amazing. I, I used your <laughs> dead batteries. I used your dumb dead batteries that you stuffed back in this thing. So it's good to, good to get out here and try to clean things up a little bit while I'm here for a day. Hey, got a lot of tweets from people who said that their OCD is, it, you're right. You're speaking for, I guess, a crew of OCD watchers about my desk, like genuinely pissing them off on a daily basis. <laughs> that, that is awesome. I didn't know that. I mean, they should come sit here for three hours in this seat and see how they really feel because it is, uh, right. you know what, it's good. It's, I, I like putting myself in, in some adversity. I like being able to overcome some garbage like this because I hey, just, oh, no fell. other time I'll be the sitting at a desk fell. like this. What? The piece of wood fell from our wall in the back. It fell off and then we taped it on the State Farm cooler. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Put it back on there. Yeah, hurry up. Yeah, can you please other, see? Other way. I mean, the other way would have been good, but I guess that red does match. Yeah, Look, I noticed one thing different, it's kind by of the cool. way. That's how it is. So all you OCD people, I'm OCD about my desk, too. <laughs> huh, how about that? <laughs> Got him. Boom. Hey, I don't checkmate. Know. Welcome back. Nick and Mitt, can we get out to the, the five-hour energy phone lines? I know we have a few callers on here, it looks like, and I, your, um, your little computer here. We have Danny in Jacksonville, if anyone wants to dial him up, since I can't figure out how to work this computer. Danny, what's up, man? What's on your mom, pal? You're doing great. Hey, how you guys doing today? I, uh, I'm i calling in. I'm telling you why the Jaguars suck today, okay? Hmm. It's not because we trade our first-round picks for shit on a stick. It's not because our head ball coach, in the words of David Allen Co., is finger-fucking Sally. It's because you pay all this money for a goddamn club seat, and the TVs are 24 inches. Whoever tells you what, size fucking matters. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah that. Hot take from Danny in Jacksonville. So he said 24 inch TVs in their suites. That's yeah. what is bothering yeah. this guy. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, they he, got two pools in that stadium. They got two pools. They got three nightclubs in there. They got a tiki bar in there. That club suite has 24 inch TVs. That what the fuck's going on? That's almost as bad as the Bengals with no practice facility. 
Yeah, I've heard this actually from other older stadiums, like the old school um, where the the Raiders were playing there. That they're they're had smaller than twenty four inch TVs. If you pay however many thousands of dollars to get them, I don't know how much their suites cost in Jacksonville compared to other stadiums. But I mean, if that's the reason you want to be mad about your team, I guess. What what do you think they should be? Forty inches and up, at least forty two. Yeah, forty two. Well, yeah, they should For also sure. just you know make sure their coach just flies back with the team and they just keep it focused on football. I think that's probably the biggest worry over there. Is it? Are those all of Urban's burners that have been tweeting me about our video we had on Monday saying, why, why you care about what this man does in his private life? You need to stop talking about it. It's like, okay, most of our conversation is like 32 jobs in the NFL to be a head coach. Let's fucking hold it in a little bit high regard, okay? Yeah. This is a privilege, not a right. Let's go ahead and respect the position. There's a lot of great coaches out there. But also, on the other hand, are these all of Urban's burners coming after me? Who's been who's been on Urban's side in this? No, that's, uh, that's AJ's cult. Yeah, yeah. So Ohio State faithful. No, I'm sure that oh, H. if you have not, not to you, buddy, if they have people that uh, – <laughs> That's what they've been telling me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I would assume – I was talking with Nick a little bit during the break. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I know being in Columbus and talking to people – they're just – they don't know what to believe. They don't, know what, they don't know what to think, I guess, through everything going on. They're like, man, I don't – I never thought I, this would happen. They just couldn't envision a scenario where Urban put himself in that situation and let it happen. So I, I don't know if people are torn. I don't know how many people are still backing him saying like, oh, yeah, go full speed ahead with Urban and Jacksonville. I don't know. Like what do, what's the national scene like? What do people feel like? Not I don't know. I think the national scene thinks that he's made a fool of himself. And there was a lot of conversations about – you know, Urban genuinely pretty well liked, I think, by the masses. Maybe I mean he's he got away with some shit. So I assume that he's a lot of people like was him, at least right? respected as a winner. I would say, right? Like people are like, hey, yeah. that guy knows how to win football games. At least in college, he has. Now he's trying to do it in the NFL. Yeah, and I never understood it. I don't think because I wasn't following college when he was dominant. You know, like I guess when he was at Florida when I was at West Virginia, but we didn't like him. You know, because Pat White, I thought, was the best player in football. Tim Tebow in the Southeastern Conference played pretty well. I mean, there's that whole thing. And then I didn't really follow follow college football much. I would just watch college game day on Saturday. So I think I missed the entire, like, Urban Meyer's a god era that happened in college football, which I do think happened. I oh, think yeah. yeah. Did, uh -huh. I, I think that did happen. I missed it or whatever. Uh, so whenever he dumps or dabbles into the NFL world, you know, now he's coming into the, you know, now he's coming into my wheelhouse here. I'm excited to get to know this. And then I do some research. I'm like, this guy's beloved. He takes a shot at me, the whole thing. I, um, it seems like the people that are coming after us, coming after me for what we said or whatever, are mostly Ohio people. And the Buckeye State will always have Urban's back. I did not know that's where he was born and raised. I didn't know like he's an Ohio guy through and through. It makes a lot of sense, by the way, but I did not know that was the case. Yeah, I mean, that's why when it was rumored that he was going to be coming back to Ohio State, it was like, oh, this is perfect. He's from here. He's not at Florida anymore. Bam. And then he he shows up and and won a bunch of what? of games, I guess. What'd you say? Yeah, wins. Yeah. That's all that matters. That's all people, you know, especially AJ, in Ohio State, they don't want to lose one game. Further to your point, what we were talking about earlier, I think there's two types of people here that are going, wow, I can't believe he would do that. And then the other type of people are going, wow, I can't believe he got caught doing that. Really? Is that, what, that the two camps that you think people mm -hmm. are in? I think so. I, 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 I man. I we should not be judging people doing something in public that we do privately. And I was like, whoa, did Ocho just say he cheats on his wife? <laughs> whoa. <Yeah. laughs> is that, you know, yeah. What does that mean exactly? A little yeah. bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I think it was like, hey, I don't know if that's what he said, but that's how I heard it. But I think he was talking about, hey, this is a private matter. Let's not discuss that. And I do believe that is accurate by what Ocho said there. But also when you're an NFL head coach and it's the middle of the season, you're 0-4, like those things matter. Like when I got arrested – on a bye week, like, hey, you know how many other people have gotten shit face drunk at Broad Ripple, but I was a distraction to the team, and winning football is already hard enough. You know, like winning in the NFL is already hard enough. So I understand that that is a very personal matter, and it is. Yeah. And I feel terrible for his wife, just like JB said. And I think she's a soldier, by the way. That tweet yeah. she put out about, oh, yeah. I'm fucking not even reading these responses. Fuck off, basically. <laughs> I, I love that whole thing, but. Him not flying back with the team and everything and being a distraction after going 0-4 and, and then your team seeing you that. and then I just think there's a lot of shit that is warranted for us to point out from a football side, let alone the incredible personal side that took a massive hit. Not that coaches' wives and coaches' marriages are perfect by any means because they're I mean, if you're coaching the NFL, you're rarely Hey, that sounds good, Pat. We got about five seconds. We're going to break. Everyone, come on back. Dawson Knox, 115. See ya.
Big distraction this weekend in your hometown, the town that you live at a bar, I assume, you frequent. Now, there's another angle coming out where Urban Meyer allegedly stuck his two fingers <laughs> into the butt of a young co-ed on wearing jeans. AJ, as somebody that lives in Columbus, Ohio, the alternate I mean, does angle. Does this video show that exactly? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Damn it. Urban Meyer sticks a finger gun into butthole <laughs> of lady who was once seen dancing on her wearing jeans. Is this, is this a normal thing that happens in Columbus, Ohio? Is this expected? And how, what, what happened, do you think? Have you been at that bar? I mean, yeah, it's, I think he was at his place, Urban Meyer's Pint House, right? It's okay. his own restaurant. And then what he said in his, his press conference... A group next door wanted some pictures, so what? he went there, and he should have got out of there when they tried to pull him on the dance floor, right? Yeah, the, the group that was next to us wanted some uh, pictures. What? And they wanted some uh, tequila. We have the best tequila. What? In town. what? And then we had some uh, cocktails. What? what? We had some spirited conversation about the Buckeyes. What? And then we went to the dance floor. What? We shouldn't have went to the dance floor. What? Once you get to the dance floor, one thing what? becomes another thing, what? which ends with... What? Two fingers in the butthole, it appears, of a young co-ed, and this is obviously a distraction uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we tease and peas towards everybody down there. Obviously not fun, not cool, but, you know, alcohol will do something to you every once in a while, get you feeling a little freaky out there, especially in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I'm also, like, no one's talking about it. I'm worried about Urban's health. I mean, like, people talk about his heart, but he has two collapsed testicles from coming in his pants so hard That's from, true. you know, sticking his fingers up that girl's butt. So, I just hope Urban's doing well. I know it was a tough weekend. So, ice those balls down, Urban. Ice them down. I mean, is, do you think he's put it in the past? Is he past this now? Is everyone going to forget about it? Yeah, I'm so, sure no way. He addressed it. It's definitely a spank bank. I, I think so. I think we're all past it, man. Oh, boy. And the, <laughs> the, first, the first video came out was from an account called Uh-Oh Urban. Yeah. <laughs> this oh, really? guy Did is Did they make a, an account just for that? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if this is a regular thing from this particular account. I stumbled upon it just this week, and I think as all of us did. And then that video got taken down. I mean, I wondered how, you know, what was the go about? Did they have to look at surveillance? You know, who is, who was sitting at this point? We got to get this thing going. But alternate angles are now coming. And obviously Urban and I assume his team is, you know, his team's probably, hey, you got, hey, you're all right, man. You don't have to worry yeah, about us, coach. by the way. Seems like you're probably going to have to have some other conversations. <laughs> but let's go win some games out there, coach. Let's go ahead and do that. But God damn. Whoa, what a moment. Yeah, All right, we covered it. We addressed it. We had to. Well, but had now to. they're in a deep dive for ass and titties on Snapchat because that is the one who put out the video yeah. of him finger getting alternate banged. The alternate angle. The alternate yeah. angle, Great yes. journalist. All right. Is the MCDC name tag then? Because it's a long time. ACDC. Do you hate it? Do you love it? We gotta. I feel like we potentially offended you after finding out you're a diehard Metallica guy and we call you MCDC. No, 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 no. Listen, I love classic rock as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I don't strike you as a numbers guy. Right? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, whenever I heard you, I was just like, you know what? I'm not 100% sure this guy is just going to be listening strictly to the analytics guy. I just kind of a feel like. Listen, I got through addition and subtraction. I'm <laughs> but the alpha comment was really, I wasn't directing that just at myself. I was saying that. That's Brad, too. Brad's an alpha. That's our coaching staff. I mean, let me say this about our coaching staff. One of the reasons I made the hires that I did with these guys, I know you'll probably end up asking this, was because just coming out of this COVID, I wanted to make sure we had more flexibility with the roster. And if these coaches need to play, Maybe a couple of games. <laughs> so, so, you know, not everybody's singing that way. Man. <laughs> All right, it seems like every three, four years, the Lions get a new head coach. It seems like the rebuilding process has been happening my entire life. 26 years old, and I've never seen a playoff win for the Detroit Lions. So I want to know how you and your coaching staff plans to make this one different. Yeah, look, first of all, I think I love Foxy, man. <laughs> I tell you what, I love the optimism that he brings. Um, look, I, I would say this to me, the, the short answer is, is Sheila Ford Ham. 
if you want hope, she's the one who's bringing hope. Because I had put a serious thought in this if I was hiring my staff. I was, I was thinking about hiring you to see if you would like to be, you know, uh, our special teams coach. And, and then I thought, you know what, just I know you doing this radio, it softened you up a little bit. <laughs> so not you. All right, I hate to say that, Pat. <laughs> Um, I needed to just let that be known. Well, I want to let you know, true alphas know when to hang them up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. Hour two here at the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat. He joins us live from San Jose, California in a fancy highfalutin hotel room. Boom. There you nice. go. That's for you, Pat. Respect for Twine. Hey, fun first hour. We had Coach JB on. Pat's doing great. Looks to be alert, clear eyes, clear heart, clear mind, looking really good over there in San Jose. How's it going, Pat? Hey, life is good over here. Don't you worry about it. Oh, What's not, that? I'm not worried about it. Is this <laughs> Mac, something Echo? You, is this Max Scherzer over here? I got to take your Echo. <laughs> is that really happening right now? I don't know. I, do, I don't think I changed anything. I did go out on the balcony during the break there, said hello to some local friends of mine, and uh, it is – it was a great day to have a feel-good Friday. Wasn't JB fantastic? That game last night, so close. Our same game parlay got shit on, but it's a great day to be alive, AJ Hawk. And you look like a goddamn Ryder Cup champion. And that's wow. what we need on this show. A little professionalism, a little class. <laughs> Don't break anything on my fucking desk. Let's have a day, yes. huh? Yeah. Let's have a day. You're right. I, I won't break anything. It is a great day. We have 115. Dawson Knox will be joining us playing on the Buffalo Bills. It'll be fun to ask him what Josh Allen is like, catching touchdowns. Obviously, he's a good blocker. Everything is going well. But uh, so... Evie, there was, a, uh, there was a little clip I saw earlier. I, I want to help set you up, give you some time. Evie Fox is what I'm, I'm talking to. Thank you. So, Naeem Hines, did we run what this clip fuck? yet? Did we run no. Hines' clip yet? Okay, so people Got talk it. about being reckless. Like, hey, you want to play football? Those people are crazy. Those guys, you better watch out. Now, we have a little clip from Hines here. Just, just take a listen and watch this guy and tell me if you want to try to, try to tackle this guy, block, do anything with this guy. He, he seems pretty uh, savage. Is there a certain level of, I'm just going to be direct, is there a certain level of crazy you have to have? Yeah. yeah. Before I go back there, I say I don't care about my life every time. <laughs> every time. Before the ball's kicked, I say that. face, too. So not laughing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it takes... Like, I mean, that, not, it's, not everybody is built to do that, right? No, I, I say that uh, it, it's something you have or you don't have. Like, I've been doing punt return my whole life. I haven't seen many guys just randomly start and continue it. Uh, it takes a special person to look up in the air, you know, and have a loving people trying to rip your head off. And, uh, you know, there's people close to you. Sometimes I'll catch the ball with people close to me. And I think it's just a skill that you just... I think it's a skill that you attribute, uh, you know, firstly just as a kid, and I think it's something you always have. Yeah, so what do you think about that, Pat? I'd, I'd say that's a guy I want back there returning punts if I'm the head coach. Yeah, Naeem Hines is explosive. I got a chance to meet him this past offseason. Incredibly cool dude as well. He's been on the show and has crushed it. Remember, this dude did like a double back McTwisty thing after mm-hmm. scoring a touchdown. He is a lightning rod for the Indianapolis Colts that have a stacked backfield and have found other ways to use him. I'm a big fan of his. Incredible return. I like that he said it's 11 people coming down to tackle, you know, respect for the – it is fucking 11 people, isn't it? Yeah, it is, Naeem Hine. There's 11 people coming to get you, you know, and hunt you down. I respect that. But it is a real thing, and I always enjoyed, you know, I always very much enjoyed we would get, like, rookie returners. You know, rookie returners would come in. For instance, uh, Philip Dorsett was drafted in the, first, uh, in the first round by the Indianapolis Colts after we already had T.Y. Hilton. We had Cribs as our returner. Now, it was at the end of Cribs' career, but he was still fucking Josh Cribs. 
So we didn't really fully understand why the draft pick happened. He had just got done running a 4-2, won Adidas Island or something. I forget what it was. But he gets drafted to the team. They cut Josh Cripps like the next day. And then they make an announcement that they can't wait to see him as a returner. And he's going to be used in a bunch of different ways. He did not return in college. Okay, so obviously me, Tom McMahon, and other people that are around special teams are like, we don't know if this dude's going to be a fucking returner. Like, it's just not just like, hey, that guy can catch a ball. That guy's fast. He can be a returner. There is so much that goes into it. And catching a punt is not necessarily the easiest thing as well whenever you have to wonder and worry about everything else going on. Naeem Hines openly stating that he says, I, I don't give a fuck if I die. Right here <laughs> is awesome to hear, but I would assume that other returners, the other great returners, have had to have similar thoughts because you are signing up with your head – my job as a punter was to get the returner's head like this because as soon as the returner's head is like this, out of sight, out of mind, normally a fair catch is coming, right? And we had a couple – we had two returners that we had a good read on that anything that was above 4.6 or 4.7 was probably going to get muffed. Mm -hmm. So like that week going in, we literally thought, okay, all we give a fuck about is hitting this one high here. This ball is going to get muffed. Turned out it did happen. We got the ball back. It was only like a 36-yard punt, I think, or a 37-yard punt. But it had to hang like 4 8 four, nine. So it's just because we saw that his head would go up like this, he'd fair catch, but he'd still get a little scared. It's just something you either have or you don't. And uh, I love that we have Naeem Hines, and I love that he's a fucking maniac. But watching <laughs> Phil Dorsett really try to do that, who I have a lot of respect for, his athleticism, he wasn't really able to do it. He wasn't able to, for whatever reason, it wasn't a natural transition to him. And when Naeem Hines said he's never seen somebody like pick up the punt returner position later in life, so real. I used to love fucking with him. I would hit... I would hit these balls that they would never see in the NFL because if you miss hit it, it's going 10 yards. But I'd hit these fucking things straight up. They'd start nuking down on these dudes. It would sound like fucking bombs over Baghdad off their chest. <laughs> Boom! It was awesome. Beat them up, ball! Would start screaming. And then Tom McMahon, like there was a couple guys. We had Quan Bray came in out of Auburn, one of my favorite dudes of all time. I tried fucking with him, and he was just catching with, like, one hand. It's like, okay, this dude's got it. You know, like, this guy's got it. Pac-Man never called for yes. a fair catch. That dude got and Pac -Man it. Like, Devin I, Hester, obviously. Or Devin, yeah, and Cincy. Yeah. With, I was in Cincy with Pac-Man for, for a year, and watching him, I, I loved when he was returning punts for us because you're right, he's not going to fair catch it. And, it, like, he might catch it and take shots from six different dudes running full speed, and then he's going to get up and like, get in their face and get, like, he definitely was never felt like he was taking the brunt of it. He was always giving it out, even if he had nine guys hitting him, and he had to let him know, like, yeah, okay, good. I'll be here next time, and I'm going to take it to the house. He was fun there's, to watch. You know, because back in the day, and this is no offense, because Devin Hester would transcend eras with how athletic he was. But back in the day and how incredible he was, Hall of Famer, I mean, everything, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Devin Hester. Changed the game, was awesome in video games, oh, I've been yeah. told. So I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. But back in the day... Normally, only like three teams had returners. It was like Hester, Cribs, and then there might be one or, or the other. Then everybody started realizing, like, okay, if we can make our most explosive player, basically, also if they have the trait of, like, hey, I can get killed here potentially and still be able to perform at a high level, it's become a weapon now. Everybody seems to have a guy that's like 4-2, 4-3 back there, and then you just got to find out mentally who can catch, who can guide, who can make the right decisions too because that there's a lot of the fair catch backed up. Do you go back to fair catch? Do you let it hit? Do you block? There's like so much shit that goes into it, I think, and Naeem Hines is a fucking great one. I love that. Oh, he's awesome. So today, you know, on Friday we always give our picks, right? We always go through the NFL slate. We'll give our picks. So we usually do it towards the end of the show. I know we have Aaron Jones at 235, so I think we should do our picks about 205. What do you think? I've been preparing for this all night. I couldn't really <laughs> sleep on these hotel oh, yeah. pillows. And the only thing I've been thinking about is I got the Rams right last night, obviously. Yeah, so I right. no big deal. Me too. Knew that was going to come, so I'm starting 1-0 and already. Uh, and then I started thinking about the rest of the slate. And I was like, I can't wait to talk to old Moxie boy. You know, ask him how he's feeling on that Sunday night game. That's a big one. That's going to be tough to pick. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Josh Allen's tough to pick against, though. Like, I feel like he is rolling. He is on his way right now. Patriots, Texans, that one's kind of tough, too, when I think about it. We'll, we'll take a look at all these matchups here about 205, I think, after we have uh, Dawson Knox before Aaron Jones. I don't know what the boys are thinking. I'm sure you guys in Hammer Down have a lot of good plays you're, you're thinking about. Is there any kind of, like, egregious, crazy lines out there this week? Egregious crazy. Like, like you think, like, all right, this seems like we could really, you know we could really meant, capitalize Tom. on Fuck this. It. 
<laughs> no, I didn't, Pat. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, there's some lines out yeah, there. Like, there's games that, like, you're good there. luck picking a side. Like, Jets, Falcons, <laughs> who knows? Carolina Eagles, yeah. who knows? Like, there's, I feel like there's a lot of good fucking luck. Like, Bears and Raiders, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen that, that now. Like, I feel like there's a lot of good luck games. Justin, Justin uh, Fields, full-time starter. Were you full surprised time. to hear that? Uh, I was not because I also learned that you know now that he's a starter he won't go to dinner because you know you have to watch film you can't exactly. <laughs> with his right. parents he don't want to celebrate with his parents yep. for, to be clear they said hey should we go out to dinner and celebrate no no I'm worried about winning the game here it is yeah. yeah Justin Fields parents wanted to take him to dinner to celebrate earning the starting job Chicago's new QB one stayed home to study film with his dog instead oh, what, what kind of dog does he have do we know he said, his name is Uno. Okay, he's Uno's the best the dog, dog ever. Name. And I would like, and Zito, I apologize because Zito is very happy about everything this guy's doing. When I Amen. read the tweet and yep. the text of what he said, I was like, okay, this guy stinks. <laughs> right? If he's saying this, this guy stinks. But then I listened to it. Mm -hmm. This dude has great personality. This guy's a fucking guy. This oh, guy yeah. is awesome. Can we play His this? The delivery of this is amazing. Here we go. My parents were actually at my house last night. I told them, and um, they wanted to go out to celebrate. And but I'm not. I'm, I'm cool. Uh, Hell yeah. Because I'm trying to win this weekend. So, um, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, of course, there's, you know, some some reason to celebrate. But, um, you know, I'm not um, just going to be complacent with where I'm at. I'm, I'm going to continue to grow, continue to get better, and um, just, just try to work hard each and every day to, you know, get good wins on, on Sunday. So. Hell yeah. Go out without you? They went out without me. Yeah, so. <laughs> Where'd they go? They what a guy. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where they went last night, but yeah, they they def they went out without me last so night. Did you celebrate by were you just home alone? I was just home, yeah, with with my dog Uno watching film last Shout night. Out. So uh, that's that's all I was doing. Hell I yeah. love this dude. Great Legit. guy. Yeah. I love, it oh, sounds yeah. much different when he's delivering it. He's I, a leader, a man. Big... He seems like a true leader. Like the more you watch him, you watch him interact. He seems to be in control. He seems to always be like. Have, have, know what's going on around him, and guys seem to look to him already at a, at a young age as a rookie quarterback. So I want maybe they, but what if his parents were just going out for like deep dish pizza? He's like, yeah, you know, I don't like that garbage. Like I would love to go with <laughs> whoa, them, but they whoa. wouldn't go. Where that I would make sense go. actually because it is garbage. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's vegan, guy. right? Yeah, he's a vegan. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah he's sure, he's like, vegan. Zito, do they have vegan deep dish? Uh, I don't think so, but um, <laughs> Illuminati actually does. Who? I know oh, that Illuminati does. Illuminati, can't Illuminati? Talk about like with Jay Z. <laughs> Who? No, it's another pizza place in Chicago. Oh, okay. Hey, deep dish pizza is just lasagna. No, so. no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's but so go good. to the deep dish places and get thin crust pizza. It's great because the deep dish dough is good, yeah. but there's just too much fucking shit in that deep dish. You I don't, don't like know the what cheese and doing. sauce. You know what I mean? It's just not anyways, even pizza. I love Justin Fields, man. I really How do you think do. he's going to play? The fact that the media. The fact that the media is popping, you know, laughing, yeah. that means he's normally rather funny, right? Because so, they're not taking him as a serious person when he's saying this thing. They're popping because they know him a little bit better than we probably do, and he's probably pretty lighthearted and relaxed. So I'm fucking <laughs> I'm – mass, I'm a massive fan. I'm excited for him. And I think Andy Dalton is a great person to have there, oh, yeah. like a great person to have. I saw it with Hasselbeck with Luck. I wish Hasselbeck would have been able to give Luck a little bit more asshole. You know, I think Hasselbeck was actually trying. Like, hey, you should tell and say these things. But that's a big deal for a rookie quarterback. And uh, I'm excited to see Dalton and Fields kind of their relationship. But also, Justin Fields take over the city of Chicago, which would definitely happen, right, Z? I mean, he oh, would yes. take over the whole city if they win. He already is. Yeah, he absolutely will. And, and it was good to see the clip and not just read it because sometimes if you, if you read that, you're like, all right, this is like – corny cliche garbage that guys say to try to get fans on their side and Amen. think that they're serious but justin fields comes across very genuine when you look at that digs you got anything you that, got that happened to me i did not watch the video oh so digs okay good well i'm glad we cleared that up hopefully some other people that are watching the show maybe and someone else who is journalism is, is watching us right now pat who i'm sure is sitting there waiting like hey all right guys like when the hell are you going to get to me i i'm <laughs> an nfl football team right now catching touchdowns every single week dominating Let's bring him in right now. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dawson Knox, tight end, Buffalo Bills. We're absolutely yeah, stunned. Yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? What's up, man? Sorry sorry for making you wait while Pat and I went through a press conference that Justin Fields was having. How you doing, man? You look good. You just get out of the, <laughs> just get out of the uh, weight room? There we go. I'm centered now. Uh, no, we just got done with a little practice. Um, no lift today. Some guys do gun show Fridays. I don't. Um, I don't know why. Never really been my thing. I kind of stick to the massage and that sort of stuff on Fridays. Um, but good for the guys getting their pump in right now. 
You move on. on. You move weight, or you uh, Pilates, yoga. You move because you move bodies. Out. <laughs> I mean, you're you're a body. Are you you Flex Friday's not your thing though, huh? You don't like eating iron out there. You know, I'm a big eating iron guy every other day of the week, except for Fridays. <laughs> yeah. uh, off season, yoga is great. I don't I don't do the yoga stuff in season. Um, I've never had a workout as hard as a hot yoga hour session. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's unbelievable. Halfway through, I'm doing the uh, child's pose or whatever they call it, where you're basically on all fours, just, you know, just take it. I mean, it's tough, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's like 150 degrees, something crazy in there, but. I tapped out. I tapped out of my first one. I said, "I'm fucking out of here." We're supposed to be 45 oh, yeah. minutes. I was in there seven minutes. Get me the fuck <laughs> out of here, dude. I was yeah. sweating for the next four hours. I mean, uh, after the shower, you're yeah. There's there's no cooling down. You want to go sit in the freezer? Oh, it's a, it's impossible to get through one of those. I feel like, especially your first one, but. Looking to, to your team right now and what you guys are doing, your quarterback, Josh Allen, I love watching clips of this dude at practice, messing with people, doing the old ball trick, running by him, acting like he's catching it, they're getting hurt, watching him dance. Was like, Has he been like this from day one? Like, What's your relationship like with him? You have a very good rapport on the field, obviously, but what's it like having that dude as the leader? Oh, I mean, it's awesome. He's been like that since I got here. Um, as he's gotten more comfortable in the – I guess in the system, like his personality's come out a little bit more. So he's doing more stuff like, you know, faking dudes out like he's about to catch a ball. Like he'll get a water bottle and act like he sneezes and just spray it all over the back of your neck and people freak out for a second. With COVID, uh, COVID got, especially, yeah. Yeah, especially with that. But uh, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, all fake sneezes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's awesome having him in the huddle. We know that any given play, he could, you know, make a 75 yard throw or go run over it at the end. I mean, it's unbelievable what that guy can do. You guys have been steamrolling people. I mean, offensive, defensive. At one point, you guys had a 56 nothing route going through six quarters, and then obviously the 40 nothing operation. That's vastly different than week one. And we obviously chit chat with Aaron. And Aaron, after their week one debacle against the Saints, was like, hey, that's just one game. This is an anomaly. Like, we still got 16 more. What was the temperature like in Buffalo after that first week against Pittsburgh Steelers? Because it seems like you guys weren't rattled at all. Was it just an off day? What do you think? Because you guys have been dominant ever since, and it's been fantastic to watch. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a really weird feeling that first game because um, obviously there's been high expectations all off season. Uh, we know how capable we are of you know going out and winning every game we play, but um, obviously some things didn't click for us that first game. But um, I mean, it's the NFL. You know, you could everybody's really good, so you got to bring your A game every game. But um, just after that, it was kind of a good wake up call for us just to know that like you know we got to get everything rolling, get everything on the right track and just take it game by game and not look too far ahead. I mean, we still got a chance to win 16 games. Um, so it's just one of those things like, I mean, you know, it's just focus on that next game. You know, you can't look too far in the future about anything. Yeah, Obviously, you don't want to ever lose a game. You don't go into any games expecting to lose. But when it happens early like that, especially to a team that has high expectations like you guys do, I mean, I would assume you look around and say, all right, hey, like, this is the worst that can happen. Like, this is the timing of it was pretty good to wake you up maybe or think, like, yeah, you're right. Every other team is good. They can beat us. Do you guys ever talk about that in your team meetings or your coaches to bring it up at all? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's no, you know, off week in the NFL besides your bye week. Like, every team's going to bring their A game. You know, you got guys that have, you know, been five-star recruits, first-round draft picks all over the place. So, you can't, you can't ever go into a game thinking like, oh, it's an easy game. Like back in college when you're playing someone you paid the millions of dollars to come play you, you know, it's not like that here. But, um, you know, we just we, we just try to have that mentality of going 1-0. and I mean, I'm sure you've heard all the cliches going 1-0 and this week. Don't look on to next week. And you can't let, you know, a loss from last week beat you twice. Um, you know, it's all the, all the common sayings you've probably heard before. McDermott and Bean, I think uh... – quite a little law firm up there in Buffalo. They they were a big deal with building the culture, I think. You know, I think that was a big deal because we talked to Bean uh, whenever Cam Newton was potentially available and Josh Allen hadn't hit his full, holy shit, this dude might be an MVP yet because of his uh, drastic growth. 
And we asked Bean, and we, he said he wanted to empower Josh to feel like it is his team. Bring in the pieces around him that make him better. Stephon Diggs, yourself, everything that they were trying to do to empower Josh. The culture over there has to be a great one because of the patience that's been exhibited by the franchise, or how is the culture on the day-to-day? It seems like you guys are one of the tightest teams in the NFL. Yeah, honestly, that was um, that was one of the biggest things that surprised me going from college to here was in college, everybody's, you know, it's kind of that family atmosphere for the most part. Everyone's within a few years of each other. Everyone's going out together after games. You know, everyone's going to class together, eating meals, all, you know, every everything's kind of that family atmosphere. But um, I had no idea what to expect when I got here, um, but I didn't expect it to be similar at all. But it's been crazy. Like, I feel that same kind of, you know, family vibe to it. You know, there's no there's nobody on the team that I, like, see passing. I'm like, oh, screw this guy. You know, this guy sucks. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, it, it, it's been awesome. You know, I, I feel like I could go out to eat, go out to dinner with anybody on the team and have a good time. Um, you know, we got all the tight ends, a couple of the linemen going out to dinner tonight. Uh, but who's, it's who's been paying awesome. for that? It's the atmosphere that you know everyone has. Who's paying for that dinner tonight? Always the rookies. You know, it's that's a no brainer. You guys do credit card yeah. roulette, or is it is it credit card roulette, or is it just young? <laughs> so we'll, we'll pick a dinner to get the young guys. Um, but most of the time we do credit card roulette. There's always a guy or two that are hesitant to do that. <laughs> um, you know, and we always peer pressure them to do it. First two times I ever played that, I lost. So I was scarred. I was one of the guys. I was like, I'm never doing this again. I got hit for, like, two dinners that were over, like, a grand each. Yeah. And it was early in my career. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm never again. Um, but then but then you start going and you start winning. And then you go to dinner and you're like, I'm getting the most expensive steak. Yeah. Bring on the appetizers. <laughs> There's a good chance I'm not paying for any of this. Um, so I'm on kind of a hot streak. Now that I've said that, I'm, you know, now that I've said that, I'll probably lose tonight. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, good luck with that tonight. We have a diehard Packer fan. During the break, he told me he hates the Buffalo Bills. But Ty Schmidt, oh. what do you got? I didn't say that. AJ's well, a sack of shit. But uh, Dawson, just <laughs> curious. You said that, like, you know, obviously there's no bye weeks in the NFL. But going from the Texans, like, are things kind of heightened in, like, the building this week when you have a team like the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football and you know, like, hey, this is probably going to be one of those teams that, you know, we're going to see down down the road if we want to make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, um, it's the same thing. Like, we, we try to treat every game the same. We don't try to put any extra pressure on ourselves just for a certain opponent. But at the same time, you know, in the back of all of our minds, we know we lost to this team twice last year. Um, they're the ones that kept us from getting to the Super Bowl. Obviously, they got talent all over the place. Um, so it's just human nature to kind of have that extra chip on your shoulder. But um, it's kind of like speaking out of both sides of your mouth. You know, at the same time, you just got to treat it like every other week, focus on us, do the things that we do simple. Um, but, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely in the back of my mind. You know, going to that field, seeing them celebrate the AFC Championship last year was really tough. Um, so we're, we're excited for this opportunity. I feel like we got a brand-new team this year, too. Got a lot of the same parts. But, um, you know, I feel like it's a completely different team than what we had last year. Completely different team, but it feels like you guys have maybe matured too. Like each year, it feels like the team has matured and take uh, taken a next step or whatever. Uh, how much do you love Bills? Just by looking at you, I don't know much about you except for this conversation where I think you're probably a fucking legend if I had to guess. But just by looking at you and the way you've spoke here, you love Bills Mafia, huh? What a perfect place for you to be. That that oh crowd, gosh. that fan base is the fucking best. I am so but the incredibly Bildos. jealous. How do you like the Bills? Buffalo Bills people that get to play for. Those motherfuckers are wild, and they stunk for a long oh. time, and they did not care. They show up and show out every single week. It's ridiculous. I mean, last year, we uh, it, it was a game that we clinched the division. We knew we were going to have a home playoff game. It was in Denver. I think we got back to the airport at, like, 1 a.m. or something, and it was, like, 8 degrees outside. And there's thousands of fans in our parking lot just waiting I mean, I, no, no telling how long they were out there. Just waiting in the snow. There's a dude up on the roof somehow of the airport. <laughs> like, how is that? Like, how do you even get up there? And later we see him, a video of him jumping through a table from like a three-story building. <laughs> um, I can't tell you the amount of videos I've been tagged in of like 
gender reveals of people breaking tables that blow up a balloon with a certain color and like people setting babies down through tables to almost like baptize them into the Bills Mafia. <laughs> it, it's, uh, I mean, coming from the SEC, I thought that was going to be the craziest. You know, the Grove is incredible at Ole Miss. I played at AM, LSU, Alabama, but um, there's something about the people here and the Bills Mafia. And it, it's like even during away games, like I, I played in Nashville my rookie year. It was probably 60% Bills fans. It, it's unbelievable the way they travel, the energy they bring. It's, it's awesome. So Connor has a question for you in a second, but I just I had to ask: like, Is there any kind of certain protocol to the coaches? Do the PR people come to you and say, "Hey, if someone throws a big old double header bildo on the field, please do not <laughs> touch this"? Like, point to a security person. Like, how do you guys deal with that, especially in the COVID times? COVID covered <laughs> bildos cannot oh. take the game down. You hear me? That can't happen. Yeah, I mean, I've only seen videos of that. Um, you know, off. there's no telling. There's no telling what might be thrown on the field. Um, we've never gone over these instances specifically, um, but I feel like it'd be one of those things that if we saw, it, it'd be like, all right, that's a little, that's a little shot of adrenaline right there. You see, a, you see something crazy that the fans are throwing on the field. We're like, all right, let's let's go. Like they're into yeah. it. We're into it. I mean, it's, there's no talent what you're going to get with these fans every weekend. Yeah, especially if the, the balls were painted in your guys' colors. Connor, what do you have? <laughs> yeah, AJ, I remember you brought one of those to Buffalo that one time you went there. Dawson, uh, <laughs> you, you and Josh Allen had a nice little prom <laughs> touchdown celebration. How did that come to be? And also, what do we got going plan in, or fo going forward? What do you guys have planned for uh, other celebrations? <laughs> um, you know, that was just one of those things that I think we were running out of the tunnel before the game. And I forgot who it was, but they were like, hey, y'all should just take some prom picks after the next one. And we're like, all right, that's a good idea. And I asked Josh, I was like, you want front or back? And he was like, I'll be in the back. Um, Whoa. So, <laughs> so uh, as soon as we scored, I saw him running over with his eyes. He's like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> and uh, we found the closest camera. Um, it was great. But there's there's been a couple others in the works. One that... Uh, we think would definitely get flagged. Um, big ball bass so, can hit it. Hey, big ball bass can hit it if that thing gets backed up 15, yeah. if it's worth it. You know? No, no no question. I mean, that dude's a freak. Um, but the uh, have you seen the Cam Peel skit with the three hip mm -hmm. thrusts? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I feel like that'd be a classic one. You know, like on the third one, kind of like short stroke it. Josh throws the flag, which is his towel in the air, you know, the whole – nine yards and you know Ooh. you're really evaluating it um take the know, ref's maybe, flag tell him to take the ref's flag <laughs> take, grab it out of the ref's you know what i mean yeah that would uh that would absolutely draw a flag <laughs> but but the ref doesn't have uh, one <laughs> but that that so. clinches a celebration i feel like that's that's one for the history books bass would be all fired up he'd probably crush it even if it was from 60. Um, but yeah, any suggestions? I got like one. We, I got one for you. You uh, know, I think you get flagged for it. I, I've been wanting to do this forever. I've been teaching my eight-year-old the old, uh, you know, the ball will take a dump with the ball. You know, you bend down and right here, <laughs> yeah. and you All drop right. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you get flagged for that now. Unfortunately, Diggs, what do you got? I know you have something. <laughs> Dawson, you're only, you're 24 years old. It's your third year in the league. How awesome was it to get the invite to be included to uh, tight end university? And did you guys do anything besides just black out in Nashville? Nice. Great question. <laughs> um, yeah, that is a good question. Um, tight end U was awesome. Uh, it's funny because I feel like 90% of the tight ends in the league have the same personality. Um, you know, everyone's just ready to have a good time. It was fun getting in the film room. Like we actually did do some good football stuff. We watched film on a few different routes. Like Greg Olson did a presentation for about an hour over one route, like a, like an option route, which was pretty amazing. Just the page that he would get on with his quarterback. Um, but uh, it was awesome too. They like rented out a whole floor of Top Golf one night. Um, Woo! Big money dude. over there, tight end. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't. I didn't touch any of that bill. That was that was. Uh, <laughs> That was all the second contract guys. Um, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> some of the dudes brought in their own drivers, and it was every single ball they hit was going over the net. So the employees had to come out, and they were like, all right, you guys need to start using some irons, no more drivers, because it was like rockets, like 400 yards. I've never seen anything like it. I, you guys I, I broke the game? Yet. 
you broke Top Golf. That's awesome. That's what everybody's trying to do every time. They didn't, swing it. They didn't break Top Golf, but but they were sending the balls over the back net. So yeah, I that's fine. In home run like, derby. Really? That's what everybody's. You're killing to people on the other side. Golf. People driving on the <laughs> right, highway behind that, dying. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there were cars parked over there or what, but there were. There was probably some damage going on behind that. Hey, Dawson, you're the man, dude. I appreciate you so much. I think AJ's going to ask you one last question or whatever, but this has been very fucking enjoyable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. We, we appreciate you coming on. I just have one more question for you before we get to a break, but you mentioned how like 90% of the tight ends in the league, you say, have like similar personalities. Why is that? Like, What do you think, like that position, why is it like that? That's a good question. Like, I, I've thought about that a little bit. Um, it's probably just because, like, we don't really have the camaraderie that the O-line has, you know, because they're all in the same room together doing the same job. There's five of them. Just it's not like we're a receiver. Each other there's... being gross, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's like we just do a little bit of everything on the field. Um, so it's not really like – and usually only, like teams will have two or three guys active at a time, you know, tight ends active at a time max. Um so it's like you really have to bond well with those guys. But when, when everyone comes together, it's like, you know, what's up? Like we automatically know each other because we've been doing the same thing since we've been in the league. Um, but I don't know. It's just, yeah. I mean, It's a good were, thing, man. It's a good thing. You guys all have great personalities. You seem like people you'd want to hang out with. So we really appreciate you coming on here, man. Good luck Sunday night against the Chiefs. Big, big game. I'm sure uh, you gained a bunch of fans today by coming on here. People love watching what you do. But ladies and gentlemen, Dawson Knox. Thank you, Dawson. Thanks, guys. He's great, wasn't he, Pat? He was awesome. I fucking love that guy. Ah, I forgot to ask him how they feel going into Sunday, whether or not I should pick him. Yeah. Is, he there? Is he there, Zeke? No, I dropped him. Shit. He said he's feeling great. I'm sure he says we're feeling great. Yeah. Old Noxy, though, huh? A fucking Noxy. I like your, uh, I, I like your uh, when you were <laughs> demonstrating what to do if a buildo was on the ground. How you, what he's you young. I didn't know if he's, you know, sometimes people are visual learners. I want to let him know that if, you know, one of them fake cocks end up on the field with Jogan <laughs> on it, this is what you need to do. You know, keep the gloves on. I mean, you definitely don't want to pick it up and throw it, do you? Well, I mean, depending upon if you want to get COVID or not, everybody's saying 90% of those buildos have COVID on. Yeah. So That's think right. about that. You know how they say, like, uh, U.S. currency has a uh, – like 90% of U.S. currency has some sort of drug that is mm -hmm. terrible for people to mm -hmm. use yep. on it? You know, over the – I think buildos, like 80 to 90% science stats told me that 80 to 90% of them have COVID on them. So keep your hands off of those buildos if they make their way onto the field. Dawson Knox, we need you out there. I'm a big fan. We do. And, and with that, Pat, we're going to get to our, our break here in this second hour. When we come back, we got a lot of good stuff. Obviously, Aaron Jones will be with us at 235. We will be doing our picks around 205 yeah. here. So hopefully I can get back on track a little bit. But everyone stick I'm around. I'm going to smoke some dope. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Right. Really? That doesn't sound like you. Really? You're, you're right. I'm but when in Rome! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stay right there. Sirius XM Channel 82, Pat McAfee Show. Uh -huh. Assembly system. Z is doing the direction, the directing, the mapping, the planning. Well, my tell is in 10 minutes, that train should be ready. Huh? He knew his shit. He said it's going that way. This is Zito guided tour. We're not going to get spot on the train. Oh wow. Oh wow. I mean, it's gonna be interesting. Are we on the right 
playing to Yankee Stadium right now. Yankee Stadium, Yankee Stadium. To the Bronx. Yeah. I don't like that hesitancy. Oh, yeah. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Uh, New York is, it's a, it's a bit much. There's, uh, there's shit everywhere. It smells like shit. There's a lot of people. Uh, but it's a, it's a hub of industry out here, you know? regulated person without really hitting my max potential and that's why he's with us i love it the pat mcafee show on mad dog sports radio channel 82 here we go welcome back to the pat mcafee show i am aj hawk sitting in for pat as he just has a little subtle dance move sitting over in his hotel room in san jose california how's it going pat Hey, it's beautiful out here i love this place that beat that was in the background there seemed to strike my bones a little bit i I don't mind the left coast over here. Now, Coach JB, who was on in the first hour from Compton, California, said that San Jose might as well be fucking Kansas, <laughs> California. Yeah, what does he mean by that? I love it. What does he mean? I think it's pretty country, yeah. Flew over a lot of, uh, like, some... Man, flew over a lot of farmland. Vinyl. Really? As I flew in here. I've never been in San Jose or Central California. I think they call it NorCal, but it appears to be Central on the uh, map. Beautiful mountains, a lot of pine. Hey, a lot, of, a lot of pine trees out here. Oh, wow. Stanford country. Is it? Is that? Is this that area? Palo Alto. I think it's like right around there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Forty-five minutes from San Jose. Hey, Steve Jobs really fucking changed the world in this area that I'm sitting in right now. You Hell know, yeah. probably smoking on the same grass that I'm smoking on right now. Did you ever right. think about that? Yeah, he did. I saw Elon Musk is taking all. He's leaving Silicon Valley, right? He's moving. Is it Tesla or what's he moving to Austin? Yeah, Tesla's in Texas, I believe. Yeah. Tesla just officially moved. Yeah. Also, SpaceX. And mm -hmm. SpaceX, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, no income tax, right? In uh, in Texas. Why wouldn't you? What? Well, Rogan went to Austin. Mm -hmm. right? yep. Elon went to Austin. Yeah. Uh, yep. Two Bears, One Cave moving to Austin. It feels like everybody's moving to Austin out of California that has a bit, not everyone, obviously there's a lot of fucking people still here. I mean, a lot of people still here in California. Uh, but a lot of people moving out of California to go back to Texas. Something I found interesting, it is a mask mandate everywhere you go in here. Really? really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Is that new? So or? what do you do tonight at the arena? I don't know, because I think I'm I'll probably have to wear it the entire time behind the scenes, I assume. But since I'm working or performing, I think there's a different rule. You know, like it's kind of like will the crowd have players. them on. Like will the crowd have to wear them the whole time? I have no idea. I'm not. I have honestly have no idea. I went into uh, Starbucks down here, though. There's a sign, master mandatory if you're moving, but if you're sitting down, you can take them off. I think and it was a smaller area. Hmm. There's somebody in the lobby of this hotel whose job is to tell you to put your put your mask on. Damn. COVID compliance officer. Yeah, right down there. He his mask, I would say, doesn't seem to be covering his nose all the time. He's fucking. <laughs> whoa, whoa. 
I mean, who am I, if he came after me for my mask potentially not being on 100%, I would let him know, like, let's talk about your fucking mask, pal. All oh, right? Well, hey, He's been bouncing it, around more than Urban Meyer's fingers. <laughs> we knew we'd get back to it. But if you see that guy, if you see him walk in your direction, just instantly sit down. Just sit down on the floor wherever you are. That's all you got to do. Where, at Starbucks? Yeah, wherever you are. You said if you're, not, if you're sitting down you're not moving, you, you don't have to have it on, right? No, that was at Starbucks. The hotel lobby is a little different, but there was a bunch of people eating like in a courtyard that this place has, and they didn't have their masks on. So I don't know 100% what the rules is. I have not been in this type of environment in some time, though, I don't think so. It, it, it has been fascinating to go ahead and put the mask back on there, put the hoodie up, look like I was going to fucking rob the joint, dude. Give me a Trenta green tea. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different depending on which state you're in. But, Nate, I want to get out to the five-hour energy phone lines, Pat. We got a guy... John in Illinois, if Nick can dial this guy up for me. John, what's happening, man? Hey, AJ, you're doing a great job, pal. Oh, thanks, pal. What's up? Hey, real quick, Pat, I've been reading these wrestling dirt sheets, and I was watching a video earlier, and I was getting pissed because they took your statement about going to Saudi Arabia way out of context. Did you see any of this? And has anyone like Stooge Michael Cole said anything to you about it? Because I know they all read the dirt sheets. Well, thank you for that question. AJ, you are doing a great job. Yeah, I said I wasn't invited to Saudi Arabia, and, uh, you know, it turned into an entire story. But, you know, I think the reason why I wasn't invited is because they knew I couldn't go, because they're going for an entire week, I think. I think that's like a four- or five-day trip. So I think that's why I wasn't invited. I think we did it in laughing and passing and conversation to dirt sheets, which I I need to know. This This is a whole new journalism group of people, you know, the wrestling journalism. The dirt sheets are different. I need to know what. What, is, I what are the dirt sheets? Not. Can you explain what the dirt sheets are? What is it? Yeah, so you get the dirt in like magazines and stuff. There used to be like two voices of all of wrestling, basically, and I forget Same the Robert names. Oh, I, I, I did a whole deep dive on this thing because I didn't fully understand it as well. But all the information that you need to, be, of course, you're breaking my shit. The, of course, you're breaking my yep, shit. Yep. Yep. Whole pack just exploded on the ground, and it doesn't work. Continue. I'm sorry. Continue. I, can't I wonder it. why you broke it. Yeah. You just fucking dunked it on the goddamn. No, I can't hear you. Yeah. I'm, telling you, I'm trying to yeah. find some fresh batteries. You have 72 <laughs> batteries up here. None of them work. It's not the batteries. You just threw it off the ground as hard as you could. Dip shit. Dude, you're going to break the table. Stop doing that. Why are you doing this? I'm not doing anything. I'm trying to get some batteries to work so I can hear you all the way out in California. Make sure the plus size is facing up. I got Where the plus side? Uh, didn't you say that? The hey, plus so what side? does this mean, Pat? What does this mean? What is it? Is this new? The one that looks like a nipple. Plus sign facing up, right? These should be new. Yeah, those are new. Those should be. Here we go. We'll see. A lot of pressure on my theory. So you, let me tell you, let me well, ask you a question. You take dead thing. batteries and you put them back in the packets and then you just leave them on your desk and don't throw them away? Well, there's only two at a time, you know, so like you, it's tough because the pack's coming forward. This is like a hot dog bun situation. Yeah. You know, we're eight True. and six, it's two and four there. So it's, and it's in the middle of a conversation. So I just put it down and then one thing leads to another and they just end up there forever. You know? <laughs> hey, I'm back. I'm back. I can hear you. And I want to get out to the callers here again on the five hour energy phone lines. <laughs> You'd use code McAfee to get what? 10% off. That's right. That oh, right? Yeah. Only available till December 31st. That's Anyways, right. this, the whole, the whole, uh, crown jewel thing. Yeah. I mean, they did take me out of context. And Michael Cole said, uh, why'd you say I didn't invite you or we didn't invite you or whatever? I was like, it was kind of like half serious, but there was some shit about it. it. I wouldn't be able to go, by the way, if I was invited. And I think they knew that. Well, maybe I would. Maybe AJ in the studio, <laughs> me go over to Riyadh. Ah! But no, that would be, they understood. And I think they, like, for the sake of my show, because I think there are people over there, like, we can't have him missing for five days of his show, which I appreciate. Yeah, you, I mean, you would do do good over there. But hey, Nick, can we jump out to Sean in Canada, old Gump's country out there, and see what's happening? What's up, Sean? What up, AJ? Bad boys. Happy Feel Good Friday. Hell yeah. Oh. Shout out. Uh, so I want to talk about, first I got a question and then a shout out after that. Uh, oh, the, Bucks defensive, uh, the Bucks defensive situation, is this part of a Super Bowl hangover possibility extension? And uh, just one time for you guys, OH. I oh, big guy. I oh, don't worry, I drowned Pat out. The injury situation, appreciate the call, bud. And all the way in Canada, I'm not sure what part of Canada uh, you live, 
But the, the Bucks, I mean, Super Bowl hangover, I don't know if that's a real thing. I, I really don't. I don't think B.A., Bruce Arians, is letting them have a Super Bowl hangover. We heard him. He talked about in their, their boat parade how he's going to kill them next year. Like, hey, we get to camp. Like, it's real. Like, we knew he's trying to hold them accountable. They've had injuries, too. Like, that's just how it goes, I think. And they're going to eventually, hopefully, peak at the right time. What about you, Pat? Out. I'm a big shit out of these guys. They know it. I, that's literally what he said. Whenever yeah. he was talking about how the OTAs are going to go, and then all of the vets didn't go. They went to Tom Brady's, and then BA said, "There's some guys that aren't at this OTAs or at other OTAs that think their job's safe. Their fucking jobs aren't safe. They need to start showing up at this fucking OTAs." Remember that was a thing, and then the mandatory OTAs happened, and then everybody kind of got on with it or whatever. But I think what you get worried about with a Super Bowl hangover is that you potentially have a team that can't handle the success so they get content and comfortable with where they're at, thinking that they're already good. That roster is littered with people who have could have gotten content about 10 years ago. Literally, there's a bunch of people on that roster that could have got content 10 years ago. So maybe they're just not clicking. Maybe they haven't found the right rhythm on who's doing what and how they're doing it. I didn't even think that their defense was that big of a problem. I mean, I mean, Mac Jones and them didn't really seem to do much last week in a massive game. But just like last year, towards the end of the year, that defense was by far the defense that could go win a Super Bowl, and they proved it. Uh, so I, I, the Super Bowl hangover, much like what you're saying, AJ, I don't think with this group that is something that could happen because they all know. They've all been there, you know? It's a real thing, though. Like the Not as much a Super Bowl hangover, but we, a lot of times, they, you know, when somebody's up for a contract, say they're playing off the rookie deal, there's people that you might be worried to pay. Like, hey, if we give this dude five years, 85 mil with 60 guaranteed or 50 guaranteed, what's he going to be? Is he still going to have that chip on his shoulder, still going to be that same person? And sometimes they're not. I mean, think about it. What is it? Sugar Ray Leonard, it's hard to get up and run when you wake up in silk sheets every morning, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's, it's true, man. Like, even if they don't know it, or you don't think about it, I think there's the little things here or there where you might let off the gas a little bit if you are paid or say you did get a ring that you've been chasing forever and you don't have that same drive. But when you have a guy like Tom Brady that just wants to win every Super Bowl ever, I don't think he would allow any of that to seep into their facility. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a very interesting way to look at it because you, you would hope that you know your players well enough that you're going to pay long term. But that is a genuine fear, I think, for the team. Like teammates, I think on some guys, like, all right, if this guy gets money, what's he going to do? What, how's he going to go? But you never know. I don't think you ever know who's going to – because there's been some people that have gotten paid and have gotten much worse somehow because they've just gotten comfortable, obviously, and they're just counting their cash and are making business decisions. In this game, I love for a long time. It became a business. I just got broken off. I ain't getting beat up anymore. Fuck everybody. That, that has happened. But then there's people who get money, and they say it's humbling, it's humbling. And anytime something good happens to somebody and they say it's humbling, I was always like, what the fuck does that even mean? Because, and I think it's because you, it's humbling in the fact that you feel as if you have to earn it. You know, like, okay, somebody put an amount of money on me or amount of praise on me. Now, for me, I feel like I should go earn this stuff. I, I feel like this is something. Let me I prove think them right. Is. I want to prove them right. Instead of what you're normally doing before that was, hey, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. All my haters, all my doubters, let's prove them wrong. Now, no, I want to prove this owner, this GM, this head coach. Let's prove them right. Like, yes, you should give me all this money. Yeah, and that's that happens in, I think, everything, by the way, you know, in life. Like, oh. I think you get a promote. Not that I know anything about fucking – Corporate. corporate. You, you definitely know a lot about like the corporate environment, for sure. I know nothing about that cube monkey life. I know no. I I, <laughs> I, I know nothing about it. Diggs Diggs has been my only source of information in that world, right, Diggs? Long time in that life. It's good life sometimes. What'd this you is a much do? Better one. But What'd you do in that life? I was uh, doing sales for a company called ADP. Wow. wow. So cold, you cold calling every day? No, not cold calling. Um, cold calling is the worst. I kind of like was more of like a consulting thing slash sales. Oh, good for you, man. He's in a cube though. With yeah. others next to him, right? Brutal. You can like see, hey, I get lunch. Yeah, there's like a hundred, there's like 120 people in cubes on the floor that I was on. Yeah, and don't let him fool you though. It was a working hard or hardly working situation. He worked in the the Stratton Oakmont of the cube life. It was really? awesome. <laughs> it was really? awesome. I feel like that's everywhere, right? But if the people who actually work and then they get promoted. We've all seen, I, I assume in the cube world this has happened. This person gets promoted. They got a guaranteed contract. They get into, they do less work. They yeah. fucking take oh, days yeah. off. They feel as if they've made it. I think that kind of happens everywhere. If you get paid, you get content. You just got to hope that you, the people you're paying go the opposite direction. Like, okay, this, this contract's cool, but that next one's going to be even better. Or thank you for this. I'm going to make sure this is well earned. Hey, we're, we're going to the callers again. We got Jin in Las Vegas on the five hour energy phone City. line. Jin, what's on your mom, pal? 
Hi, hey, I'm a girl. <laughs> First, I know. I love you, AJ. I love you, Pat. I love every one of you Is your guys. Name yeah. Jen, like the alcohol. Okay, G I N. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Not Jen. Gotcha. And I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, but I'm an Ohio State fan. All right. Oh, eight. I O. I O. I O. The main reason I wanted to call you guys is I've got a lot of like um, autoimmune issues, and then I had COVID for like, I'm still suffering. And for years now, every day I have my coffee. And I watch every minute of you guys. And you. you've taught me so much about football. You, but the main thing what you guys have taught me is, okay, I love you, AJ, because you played for Ohio State. I'm not a Packers fan. However, you have helped me, all you guys, appreciate all the other teams and and all the guests you bring on. You've taught me so much about other areas of football and other sports. I just don't think you guys realize how awesome you are. <laughs> well, Jen, uh, I, I don't want to speak out of line here. You're the awesome one. We fucking stink. When you get sick of us, we completely understand. But I want to let you know, thank you for calling in here and uh, reminding us that, you know, we're not just complete – Shitbirds. That's very nice of you, Jenny. Well, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of your entire, you know, every life, day. ecosystem every and everything. Day. Every day. And I love you guys are like my brothers because I have five brothers. Right. I grew up in Arizona, you know, and I miss people and family. And I feel like I'm sitting around love with you, my Jen. brothers. Love you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Love you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Love you guys, all of you. Keep it up. And I love it when you have special guests. Um, and I love the banter, and you're, you're, thank you for having me hey, on. Thank you, Jim. I, thank you for calling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Jim. Hey, for some reason, on the, the little call screen, it said in parentheses, longtime poker dealer. What does that have to do with the call? Does anyone oh, know? Oh, they have the best stories. Oh, uh, She's a dealer in Vegas? That's awesome. That's what it said, longtime poker dealer, and also said Justin Fields before that. So, Oh, and a Bears fan? Let's go. Yeah, I'm not sure. He's huh. a Cowboys, Cowboys fan. fan. Oh, no. Well, I'm not <laughs> sure That's who crazy to hear, isn't it? Hey, that was fucking absurd to hear. Yeah. A poker dealer in Vegas listens to the show and watches the show <laughs> and considers us her. And we are the dumbest group of humans on earth. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of it, Jen. I That's agree. Awesome. Yeah, Jen, yeah, Jen is, it's awesome to hear that. You walk Legends. out, you see people. It is funny, I guess. I'm sure you get it way more than me. But when you, I hear, I, I meet, I run into people that watch the show or watch, they, 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 They'll mention specifics to me about, the, oh, man, yeah, your fingers really are that bad. Oh, man. And it's someone that you never thought would watch the show or listen. So it's pretty cool every once in a while to see that happen. It, it happens more and more, I guess, the more you go out. So as soon as I walked into the dispensary last night, my guy Christian sitting there fucking, oh, my God. Because I had a mask on, and he was like, tank top. This, you're Pat, right? And I was like, uh, yeah, what's up, dude? You know, and he was like, welcome to my store, dude. This is fucking awesome. And uh, he was I would have kept this place open for you if you would have just messaged me. I'm like, good to have you in the Rolodex, it sounds like. But, yeah, that is so fucking cool out here in San Jose, man, gin in Vegas. It's dumb. We're, I'm very, very, very thankful for everybody. And it's, by the way, it's because of you, AJ, and the boys, why this whole thing works. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm incredibly thankful for everybody. No, very it's all you, now. Pat. Love you, it's Pat. All Pat. Pat. It's all you. you. You, 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 it's us, it's us, it's us, what, yeah, what, it's what? everybody, and hey, Pat, I don't know if you know this or not, I was, someone made me aware, I was in the bathroom taking a leak in between uh, segments, and I heard there was a couple guys' birthdays out here, w whose birthday is today, right, what, that oh, boy, Chuck Bay, hey, who else, somebody hey, else, too, Zito's this weekend, Adam and Zito, what are you doing for it, Z? What are you going to do? We're going to go to a uh, pizza place. Good for you. What about you, Gump? What are you doing? A couple ice cold but <laughs> nice <ice> wine. <laughs> wine. <laughs> hey, how old are you guys? Do you tell people your age? About to be 30. Gump's oh. 30. You're only 30 years old, Z? That's uh, awesome. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What was that about, AJ? Yeah. What, what do you mean? Jeez. Jeez. I mean, what I the hell is that? I, 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 at times, I think you guys are like we're contemporaries. I'm 37. I'm old as hell compared to all of you. So sometimes I think oh, like, oh, shit. you guys are around my age, but you're not. 
It's all right. It's good. You guys keep me like you're you like the TikTok generation, really. (laughs) Keeps everybody (laughs) up to date with what's going on. Miss the TikTok generation. Do not throw that at at our direction. Yeah, it's Evie. Evie. Yeah. Evie's yeah. very young, too. 27, AJ. Right? Dang, you're young, too, man. All you guys, Pat, you, Foxy, you're young. take a stand for yourself. One Come time. on. Come on. I'm 40, AJ. Okay, respect it. I respect <laughs> it. You're passionate. I really do. Do you want to be called Evie? For real? No, no yeah. I don't know. I do like being called Evie. My it. mom used to call me that. AJ was yes. going to call me Evan, and then he was going to say Foxy, so then I think he landed on Evie. Oh, Valerie Fox is a saint. A saint. Yeah, well, hey, guess what, Pat? After the break, we are going to get into our picks. I hope oh, you're ready. Yeah. You better get those ready. Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. Hey. Gentlemen, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Coach Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Oh man, Pat, it's an honor to be on with you, man. Thanks for having me. You're a legend. Thank you for putting me through my workout and having the scouts actually come watch me kick at West Virginia. I don't think I've ever fully thanked you for that moment, Coach. No, man. I, I, I've drank the, the McAfee Kool Aid for a long time. Uh, <laughs> Let's get right into it. The locker room culture changed completely when I was in elite, from when I was a rookie to when I was done, and I retired after the 2016 season. Now it's even more different, I would assume, from when you came into Pittsburgh and everything like that. The dancing on the logo, the TikTok, everything like that that you guys have had to experience. What is your messaging in there? How do you adapt and let players be themselves without you know, doing too much? Because that is a fine balance that you've been able to do, I think, in an incredible job with throughout your entire time in Pittsburgh. I think for me, more than anything, I try to stay connected. You know, um, just getting a sense of where these guys are coming from, what's in vogue for their generation, what captures their attention, how do they learn, how do they communicate, how do they interact with each other formally and informally. And I think being a parent kind of helps me. You know, my boys are 19 and 20, so it's not much difference between them and some of the younger guys that I deal with here. And so for me, it's just about gaining an understanding and working to stay connected. You know, that's my general attitude, man. It's adapt or die for me. And, and I want to—I don't want to be one of them old crusty guys, man. Just that just refuses to adapt. Although I am one of those old crusty guys now. Yeah, you are old as shit now. You know what I mean? I mean, you've been around a long time. I remember back in the day, whenever you showed up, there was a lot more, you know, to the camera. There was a lot more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that. Now you're just old ass man now, huh? You know how it is. Years in this business will scar you, man. It'll settle you down. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> one of my favorite moments uh, with you is. Uh, when you would tell me every um, warm-up, uh, I'm gonna get you back to Pittsburgh when you're old and cheap. Uh, what what's yes. that mean? <laughs> what, what did that mean? And uh, should that have been taken as a smack in the mouth, like I, uh, whenever you said that to me? No, man, it was a tip of the cap, man. There's okay. certain guys Good. around this league that I'm really interested in, but I know I cannot afford. And, <laughs> And, and you were one of them. So I was going to wait for you to physically deteriorate a little bit until you came back into my wheelhouse. Yenzers are going to go bananas in Heinz Field this weekend. First time it could be filled up in a long time. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to. Oh, mama, I'm here for my life. I'm the oh, 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 oh. Is that your alarm clock? Yeah, just say yes, by the way. Yeah. It's my ringtone. It's my alarm <laughs> clock. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you, Coach T. Last question before we let you go. Uh, why'd you let Troy Paul Mala do what he fucking did to me? Why'd you let... I know you've heard of this. Why, why? <laughs> well, that's a short side of the field. That's bad football. You guys coaching unsound football over there in Pittsburgh? How did that happen? We know you and love you as a man. But on Sundays in the fall, man, you're the nameless gray faces that we got. All right, <laughs> All right. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, never had a losing season, absolute legend, two-time Super Bowl champion, 
Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Thank you, Coach. That opening kickoff in that uh, Super Bowl you're referring to with the Colts, Hester takes it a crib. You having a little bit of a heart attack there? <laughs> Very bad, bad decision, Pat, on my part. All week up in Indy, we're practicing, and we know he's their number one threat. They don't have a lot of offensive weaponry. They went with defense and special team. So for the whole week, we're in Indy. We're not going to let him touch the ball. We practice squibbing to the corners, bouncing the ball, high kick, pop-up kickoff, punt it out of bounds. Everything to not let him touch the ball. Uh, we have a chapel service, and the chaplain talks about David and Goliath. And he says, hey, the reason David beat Goliath, he wasn't afraid. Everybody else was afraid. David ran right at him, threw it right between the eyes, and it was over. And I started thinking, we're playing, we're acting like we're afraid of Devin Hester. So I told the team on Saturday night, I hope we lose the toss. We're going to kick off. We're going to kick it right down the middle. When we pound him, they'll know we mean business. <laughs> Goliath, it's going to be over. We kicked it to him 12 seconds later. He's in the other end. Of the <laughs> looking at me saying, what idiot decided to kick the ball to Devin Hester? But fortunately, uh, the, the last 59 minutes, the team made up for it. <laughs> Wait until they see the tone we set on the opening kickoff. Yeah, mm. yeah that was it. I that bet you Vinatieri was in there. Ah! Uh, <laughs> the I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Hello, welcome back. This is the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat today, and the time has come, Pat. We are going to give our picks here for the whole NFL slate. Woo. Week five. Yeah. yeah! Week five coming up next. Are you ready? Did you did you stay up all night and study? Yeah, I stayed up all night studying, thinking about it, knowing that I beat you last week, so now I need to go back to back. Back to back. 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 Well, do we have? Do we keep the overall standings? Because I would imagine I'm absolutely no, no. pummeling you when it comes to that. Match score, cuz. What? Match play. Oh, what have you done for me lately? Is that what we're doing here? No, no, you just keep scoring weekly. You know, yeah. it's like golf. You no, I'm going to – someone better compile my, my yearly score, too, what, over the whole course of the season. You're up, too. You're up, yeah. too. Okay, I mean more games now. I want total games. We we should keep no, track. No, I want to make sense though. Yeah, well, it's all right. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Let's let's put the, the games up, Pat. I'm sure you've been agonizing over these games all year. So you picked the Rams last night because you followed me. So therefore, you are welcome. You are one to zero, or you're one to zero this week. So am I. So we're heading into the rest of the slate, tied up, going into uh, the week. Let's start. Hey, I want to look at the Patriots Texans. Let's start right there. This thing is tiny little writing. So Patriots Texans. The Patriots. Jeez. Eight and a half point favorites. Is that right over the Texans? Yeah, they are missing four of the five starting offensive linemen this week. The uh, Texans. The Patriots. Patriots. And they're still eight and a half point favorites? Uh, that is very, very high for that. Davey Mills. Oh, man. What do you think here, Pat? Doesn't that seem like a lot? for Especially for a team like the Patriots offense hasn't been super explosive. They look good, but they don't put up a ton of points, I feel like. Let's remember Belichick first rookie quarterbacks. It is alarming how... Uh, Confused he makes him. Let's remember what happened to Zach Wilson a couple weeks ago as well. So just throwing and that Doug, out. I mean, Doug Mills has not shown that he's going <laughs> to maybe be a great player. Nope. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure Doug's proved that. Eight and a half's a lot, but four missing offensive linemen? Ah, eh, fuck it. You're not supposed to pick the Patriots. So I'm going with the Patriots on the road. Yeah. Go ahead and blowing out the Houston Texans down there. You know what? I don't like to do it. I don't like to agree with you, but I'm going to have to go with you here. Patriots. Minus eight and a half here for this game. Wow. I really do. Okay. Right. It pains me to do it, Pat. It really does. Eagles, Panthers. Here we go. Eagles are a three point dog against the Panthers. Panthers are three and one. Eagles one and three. This is a tough one. I don't know how Sirianni's feeling this week. <laughs> I'm sure he may have something to say here in a few minutes after we make this pick. But I, man, what do you think here, Pat? What do you want? 
Well, I'm, I find it interesting that you're going down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was yeah. thinking the same thing. The first game of the day is the 9:30 Jets Falcons in Europe game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You guys can do whatever you want. If you just want to stay in your box and do what you've been told, that's cool. I'm gonna go. Up, I'm gonna go up and down. I'm sitting here in the hot seat right now. Hey, you're an outlaw. I get it. I understand. But I'm just saying. You. Know, I. To be honest, I was looking at those games while the things were going on, and you've gone. Yeah, like, I'm gonna bounce around. Guess what? I'm bouncing around. Until Fifteen picks from now. I'm not. I'm not just going up and down now. I'm going diagonal, just like Willy Wonka's elevator here. I'm pretty soon. I'm jumping all around the board. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. I like. Hey. Hey, let's keep us on the toes because the only segment we really do and have a lot of respect for is this one, where we pick the entire fucking slate every week. And uh, coming off a winning weekend, I like. Can you put it back up? <laughs> Eagles, Panthers. Eagles are three point dogs. 20 seconds ago, the Panthers tweeted that Christian McCaffrey is doubtful for Sunday. Oh, man. Give me the Panthers. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I got. I, you know what? Gosh, this is terrible. I'm going to take the Panthers, too. I will. What the fuck? Here we go. You pop, you pop that sucker back on. I'm going to just randomly pick another game. No, where, where do you guys want me to go? You want me to go Jets, Falcons, then we'll just stay going that oh, way? You can't think no, of no, 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 Stay, no, stay with the yeah. way you started. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's do Giants, Cowboys. Oh, the Giants oh, are seven point dogs here. When we look, and you know how many pissed off people are that are watching this <laughs> yeah. and seeing me bounce around the board? Oh, I don't want, hey, for the, the people watching, listening, I do not want to upset you. But, Pat, I do want to upset you. So let's go Giants, Cowboys right now. Plus seven. I like the Cowboys here at minus seven. I really do. Hey, me too. I was about to say, there's too much hype. People saying that the Giants are going to keep this close. You know, there's too much hype regarding that. I think a lot of people are selling the narrative like, hey, the Giants, not as bad as they look. They've actually gotten better and better. And they did, by the yeah. way. Last uh, game in overtime, we went to ball. Fuck them. You know, and then <laughs> oh, yeah. Saquon right. Barkley went Peppers. and did his thing. Uh, but I, I just think the Dallas Cowboys are a fucking squad. They're a wagon, and uh, I like them as well. I hate that we are on the same side of this, though. I am yeah. upset about it. I think soon enough we, we may uh, do that. Okay, here we go. Packers, Bengals. This game is being played in Cincinnati. The Bengals are three-point uh, favorites, right, coming into this? Uh-huh. Man, I'm going to yeah, have I mean, Packers. Are three point no, Packers. Packers are three-point favorites. I mean, Bengals three-point dogs at home. What do you think here? Yeah, you meant Packers, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm with you too. Packers. I mean, I love Joe Burrow, but I think the Packers win. They win by more than three. Love Joey Burrow. Okay, absolutely love him. I just assume Lafleur is a better coach than Zach Taylor. Bingo. I, don't know. I, I might be wrong. I'm not 100 sure. I love the team that Cincinnati has. I think they have dogs. I mean, you played on that team. I like that team, but I just think the Packers are the fucking Packers. So what are we even doing here? They're, they're, maybe people don't like them because Aaron has long hair, or maybe because they lost that opening week. This is still the fucking Packers, though. You know what I mean? And no offense to the Bengals because this is a new Bengals. This is a new era in yeah. Cincinnati. Same practice facility situation. Brand new Bengals, though, with yeah. Joey Bad Boy Burrow uh, at the helm. But this is the Packers. What are we doing? Yeah, the only thing would worry me that their uh, secondary is a little banged up. But if they can get pressure, which, I, I mean, the Bengals' offensive line has not been great this year, the Packers should, you know. I mean, I'd be shocked if they came out and laid an egg. Can we, can we pop that, that uh, slate of games back up there? I need to randomly select another game that I want to pick here. Okay, Raiders, Bears. Here we go. The Bears are at the Raiders, and the Raiders are, what, five-point favorites at home? Five, five and, and a half. half. Five and a half. Ooh. You're talking about my desk as an OCD guy with this fucking jump around <laughs> on the TikTok <laughs> toe board that you're doing right now. I what mean, if, this is unbelievable. What if, well, I started. You want me to go back then? Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. Let me let me go back in line. Let me fall back in line now. <laughs> No, no, we're gonna we're gonna miss one for sure. No, we're gonna miss not. one. We're gonna no, hit we're one not. twice. We're definitely gonna hit one twice. I'm high. You have no idea what you're doing. We're, <laughs> this is there's there's. I mean, I love what you're doing, and uh, I like the uh, the Bears. At, bear down. at five and a half. Yeah, they're five and a half point dogs, right? You know what? Hey, yeah. I'm gonna have to go with the Bears too because that Justin Whoa. Fields, his presser when he's talking about wow, it. Hey, dog. mom and dad, go have deep dish. I don't care. I don't like it anyway. It's gross. I'm gonna watch Whoa. film. I'm gonna sit with Uno. Do we know what kind of dog Uno is? The greatest dog ever. I assume like a French bulldog. Those are those are hot right now, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not. I haven't seen Uno, but I'd assume that's what it is. That is correct. Oh, it's a French. Bulldog? Are you kidding me? Nice. nice. Wow. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm so fuck it. I'm a fucking. Hell yeah! <laughs> so we're on this. We're on the same page on every game so far. 
Yeah, it stinks. And okay. We don't know what games we've already called. <laughs> Let's pop that one back up, Z. All right, Bills Chiefs. Here we go. Bills are three point dogs at the Chiefs. Man, I like this game. It's going to be fun to watch. What do you think? I want you to go first. Chiefs. Dang it, Chiefs too. No, no. Okay, I'll go Bills. I wow. like Dawson Knox. Okay, you like the Bills at plus three. Yeah, yeah. I okay. like Dawson Knox a lot. I was going to pick Chiefs because what they did to the Eagles, and maybe they're all the way back, and they had a couple like, oh, where, what is, what's going on? We. We're not humans. What's going on here? And then they may be back. I like that. But Dawson Knox, after that interview, if you were going to say the Bills, which I assumed you would, hey, Dawson just came on the show while I'm hosting and get, put him over there. You didn't, though. You picked Chiefs. I'll pick the Bills. <laughs> I got the Bills then. I am. I think it's going to be a good game, just like I thought last night's game was going to be a good game. And it, eh, I think this game is awesome, and I'm excited for Sunday Night Football again. All right, good. So we finally disagree. I got the Chiefs at minus three, Sunday Night Football at home. We will see what's up. With that, okay, Dolphins, Bucks, man, the Dolphins are nine and a half point dogs at Tampa Bay. This one's kind of tough for me, honestly, to think about. What do you think? Uh, the Buccaneers win by seventy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to go with you. I, I agree. It, it's tough. Well, Gronk's out. How many people are out for the Bucks? Winfield's out as well. Yeah, doesn't matter. Bruce Arians could play running back, and they'd beat the Dolphins. Well, listen, <laughs> the Colts. Have not won a lot of games this year. They yeah. won, to be okay. completely transparent. And yeah. I've watched all these Colts games with the sound on, by the way. Because you can only have one TV with sound on. And I always dedicate it to the Indianapolis Colts game. So I feel like I've watched a lot of Colts. I've heard a lot of Colts. I've you know, listened to the analysts who are always really good for Colts games. It's not like F-level, G-level analysts for the Colts games every single week. <laughs> the Colts did not play. Okay. <laughs> The Colts did not play a good game of football against that Dolphins team. Yeah, and the Colts have yet to be able to put it all together. That Dolphins team, if and I haven't watched a lot of the games, and I, I promise to be a Fins Up fan, especially because the passion and vitriol from their fan base to me this offseason on Twitter, which I had a lot of respect for, they looked bad. And, and I don't know if that's normally – I don't know if that's normal, Gump, but that team looked bad. And the Colts beat them, and the Colts didn't even really play that good of football and beat the Dolphins. Yeah, ever since Tua went out, they stink. They are a very, very bad football team. But do you think they? Do you think when Tua comes back, he fixes all the problems? He doesn't fix it, but they're a better team. They can run more plays. They looked decent against the Patriots in Week One with Tua. Since he's been gone, they have been god awful. Well, yeah, I'm, so I got the man. Bucks. But people are so torn on Tua, though, aren't they? They are trying to figure out, hey, is this our like? Is he the franchise dude that we think he was when we drafted him? Like, I still feel like people are up in the air on that. Well, yeah. right now, I think, by the way, year four, year five, people can still be up in the air. I mean, Baker Mayfield's yeah. looking at another contract, yep. you know what I mean? And fucking uh, Derek, or Drew Locke, Derek. Derek Carr also has no money left, but he's already got paid. Drew Locke went into his last year, and they didn't know. Josh Allen, I think, for the first couple of years, they didn't know yeah. if he was going to be a guy, you know? So, like, I think the question now is, can Tua's body handle the NFL after the hit that he took, which – Darius Butler and you have said it. it seemed like a pretty routine shot and the early indications was that there was no injuries which I think kind of painted a bad narrative so not only like last year the offense was very inefficient they stunk new offensive coordinator they don't look as bad two was letting it rip a little bit now like will he be able to be durable enough there's just always these questions it seems like nothing's really stable down there and uh, I feel like the Buccaneers are just only going to get better and better as the year goes by. I, I honestly want to take the Dolphins here. Like I, I'm trying to talk myself into it, but Do I it. can't. I can't. I'm going to take the Bucks. I mean, I'm probably stupid. Oh, I should oh. trust my instincts. You know, you should always trust them. But uh, my instincts say Tom Brady and the Bucks are just going to be too much, and they're going to cover on that one. Can we pop that screen back up? So let's get down to the Niners Cardinals. So the, the Niners travel to Arizona, and they the Niners are four point dogs here. Oh boy, what do you think here? Cardinals are rolling. Cardinals, Cardinals are only undefeated team That's in the, right. the yes. league right now, yeah. too. Kyler Murray on an MVP type pace right now. Does he is he able to keep it up? Yes. Cardinals by ten. Oh boy. What is it again? What's four the four and a half? Four and, four and a half, half nine. Uh, yeah, because I don't know about the Niners yet. I, Jimmy G is still like aren't they saying he may play? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. up in the air still. Okay. I Yeah, because it's it was a it was a bone or it was a muscle contusion. Yeah. It was a Charlie horse of the calf. It wasn't. He didn't pull his calf. He got hit on the calf. 
Mm-hmm. It was a Charlie horse, yeah. That's what Rappaport told us yesterday, allegedly, while you were mm-hmm. golfing, hoiding the toy around, whatever the hell you were mm-hmm. doing at your little Ryder Cup event, whatever you had Correct. going on, or whatever the uh, you know black tie affair, look down on everybody event that you had. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a bruise or whatever. So oh, whatever okay. the case, and I like the Niners as a football team. The Cardinals, I literally just got done saying on Monday, are they going to go undefeated? Is this team the (laughs) best ball time? I just, at home, I think FaZe Clan Kyler is just balling. I like that team a lot over there. Yeah, I got to roll with Kyler and the rest of uh, the Cardinals until they prove me wrong. I I think their defense is fun to watch. Kyler obviously does things that nobody else can do. So we agree once again on the Cardinals. We pop that, that slate of games back up here. Okay, let's bounce around. Let's see what we haven't got to. Ooh. Monday night, Pat. Colts at what? the Ravens. We don't do Monday till Monday. You're dude. right. Yeah. We what don't. are you doing? I would, I would take it. I would take the Ravens at minus seven on Monday <laughs> night, Pat. You can do that later. We'll work on that Monday. Uh, Browns Chargers. This one this intrigues me a bit. So the Browns are two and a half point dogs traveling to play the Chargers out in L.A. What do you think? Chargers, no problem. I don't know what's going Ooh. on with Baker. I guess mm. people are talking shit on Baker. Uh, I don't know how healthy the the Browns' offense is. I I don't know the in and out. But I do know that that Chargers team is just – they're a fucking team. They are a wagon. I -hmm. like the Chargers squad. I like Justin Herbert. Uh, I don't want to say Justin Herbert has anything to prove over Baker, but I think Justin Herbert is really just starting to go, you know, really just starting to go. And this is a big AFC matchup. They might meet each other down the road. I like the Chargers in this, especially at home. So I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. I love the Chargers. I love Justin Herbert. He may be the MVP this year. They may win the Super Bowl. But right now, I'm taking the Browns at what? They're at plus two and a half? Mm-hmm. Yep. Browns. I'll take the Brownies. I know I saw a whole thing out. Baker was talking about his labrum. He made a tackle after a pick. Should quarterbacks go make tackles? I like my quarterback going out there and challenging people, making physical tackles. Sucks that he got hurt a little bit, but I think he's going to be fine. And I think that pass rush for Cleveland hopefully can find a way to get home a bunch of times and, and make Herbert a little bit uncomfortable. Mike Greenberg uh, was making a point this morning. Old Greeny, two-time Hall of Famer, uh, Greeny, uh, host of, of Get Up, was making a point that are we not uh, somehow are we not talking enough about how quarterbacks should not make the tackle if they throw the ball or throw an interception or a turnover happens, just get off the field because he thinks, which I think a lot of people think, that the torn labrum in the left with the harness with how tight it is is definitely affecting him. This is yeah. a contract year. That team's ready to go. He's not his best. If he decides not to make a play for his team there after a turnover, everything's still good. Now, obviously, <laughs> Sacho came in and told a story about how when he was at the Bears, Pat O'Donnell, who was the punter for the Bears, was either told or did whenever he punted a ball, he would just go get right off the field. So kind of a burial of the, of the brand, kind yeah. of by yeah, Sacho sure. there. And oh. if, if that is what, what Pat O'Donnell did, who Pat O'Donnell's a great athlete, very attractive, got big. Hey, go fucking make a tackle for your teammates <laughs> if they need you, okay? I did that in preseason games because I almost died and Stupid. I was told to get the fuck off the field. That's in dumb in games. a preseason game for you to make a tackle. Bingo. I was told that by... Rest in peace, JT, by the way. But I was told that by coaches, like, hey, in preseason, get the fuck, you punt the ball and get the fuck off. But in regular season games, if you're on film not giving effort when you're almost giving up a touchdown, no matter what your position is, you'll get laughed out of the goddamn building. You'll get laughed yeah. out of the goddamn building. You're right. I understand. So I was on the Bengals when Andy was on an MVP type pace playing and had an unbelievable year and then threw a pick, went and made the tackle and jammed his thumb up, broke his thumb or whatever, had to have some surgery. Oh. Couldn't play. It, it was brutal, but how you going to fault a guy for going in there and trying to make a tackle, trying to make a play? Like I used to tell Nugent, so I played with Nugent in college and then one year in Cincinnati. I said, Nuge, I don't care what you do. Kick the ball off and run directly to the sidelines because we don't have a backup kicker and you're really good. So if we if they get to you, that's our fault. We should be able to make the, the tackle with 10. That's what I told him. I understand it could be a bad look and most kickers don't want to do that. Well, I think there's some kickers that don't mind it, you know, and I think those are the potential kickers we're trying to weed out. But also some of those kickers are very good at kicking balls and are very accurate. I can understand like the the rule of hindsight makes everything look better. But what happens if you get in there, make the tackle that you only end up winning by one or whatever the case is. And then in the film room the next day, everybody's like, hey. This guy who doesn't normally do this made a play for his team when he didn't have to. Hindsight is always the smartest, and stats will tell you that, like you, Dalton, and maybe Baker this year and this whole thing, but I don't think that's something you can teach to some players, and I don't think some players would ever appreciate looking like that on film. 
You know what I mean? It some did, people. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying some people won't like that. It did look like Justin Reed, when he saw it was Baker, was like, oh, okay, I'm going to put my head down and run right through this guy. Hey, because, they're yeah. taught that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. AJ, aren't it's you the only taught time, that? It's the only time you could hit him, really, if you have the ball, you pick him off. But you can also, if you lower your head and, and you make head-to-head contact, you're going to get called for the flag, too, now that I think about it. In this, in the NFL now, what is yes. that? It does rarely happen to running backs. But Justin Reed, when you watch the replay, he did send yeah. Baker. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was perfect. Yeah, that's what they do. Back in the day, whenever a pick happened, the first two oh, people yeah. you attack is the wide receiver that was targeted and the quarterback. That's literally what like people were You talking. seek him out. That was exactly, absolutely. Find a quarterback, find a quarterback. and you got Because a lot of times, too, that quarterback hangs around and ends up making a tackle or pushing a guy out of bounds. And – it's your only time to really get to pummel that dude. So now you can't do it as much. It's a lot tougher. Oh, I didn't think it was because you're you're trying to take a cheap shot at the quarterback, but I thought it was because they're the ones that know it was a pick long before most other True. people. There are some of the only athletes out there that can make the play what you're saying because offensive linemen are out there. But, yeah, of course, a guy who has – zero documented concussions and used his helmet as a weapon saying it was 40 pounds would huh. say and it also you get a chance to fucking murder a guy you yeah touch it, why not well no you can't really do that anymore but you're 100 percent right yeah he knows the pick was thrown before anybody else but yeah you gotta you gotta take your shots when you can that's the only time you can legally get them hey, now you can't anymore andrew luck was awesome i wouldn't go after I'd, you gotta send a dn to go after andrew luck he's too big for someone like me to take on well, Andrew Luck would become the end. Yeah. As soon as that ball was in the air and he thought it was potentially going to get picked, he was, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll see you in the parking lot, Mr. Gilmore, or whatever. Like, he was <laughs> on a mission. He <laughs> fucked some people up. I mean, there was there were some big-time shots out of Andrew Luck, and he even did that back in college. That was, like, his thing. And this goes back to that style of play where it's like, I messed up for my team. It'd be disrespectful to football if I don't go and make the play for my team. It's like in hockey. Whenever or in soccer, you lose the ball or you lose the puck or lose the ball. Normally, you have to at least display a massive amount of effort to get that ball back or you'll be laughed out of the building. It felt like Andrew Luck viewed it that way. I threw a turnover. I need to make this up for my team no matter what anybody thinks. He continues, you know, the end of plays going. It's disrespectful to football if I don't go. I assume Carson Wentz, who listens to um, – who listens to faith music before the game would throw his face into a wedge if he accidentally threw a kickoff and there was a four man <laughs> wedge running into him. And that's the type of player that you would assume listens to faith music before the game, but I that's what they do out there. That's what they do. We have five games remaining if we pop it back up. So we have Jets, Falcons. Here we go. We're trying to find it on this board here. I can't yeah. even figure out where we are. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Jets are at Falcons. The Jets, man, the Jets are two and a half point dogs travel to Atlanta. Do we have any idea? In London. Who in the London. hell? Oh, yep. in London. Okay. Do we have any idea what either of these teams are? Like what they're going to be at the end of the season compared to now? Falcons are hurt completely. Yeah. Ridley's Ridley. out. I think Gage is out. I mm-hmm. think they have a couple people out. We have no idea what either of these teams are. Are The only thing we know is one quarterback's a vet, one quarterback's a rookie. So does that come into experience whenever you're playing in London and everything changes? Maybe, but you don't know what you don't know yet either. So Zach Wilson might not have a full routine in his NFL system. I like the Jets, and this is very dumb. I never thought I'd say this ever, wow. uh, but it feels like the Falcons are so hit or miss. They're injured. It's London. Why not Zach Wilson? That baby face in front of 200,000 Mormons over there fucking getting the win over there. I hate to do it, but I have to agree with you. I have to oh. go with the Jets here. Just, I mean, Ridley being out doesn't help. That's for sure for the Falcons. I just don't know about the Falcons. And I think the Jets, you know, whatever. They're riding a little bit of uh, momentum from Zach Wilson. I think he gets over there in front of that London crowd and maybe gets all juiced up and maybe they blow him out. Hey, Diggs, you were right about the Queen thing with Zach. Thank you. I, I'm telling you, man, you – and I, I sent it in the group yesterday. You, you put their pictures next to each other. If you just age Zach Wilson like 80 years, they're the same person. Wait, at the Queen of England? Yeah. I'm going to have to you check that her. one out. I can't, I'm, trying to pick, I'm trying to picture it right now. I don't know if I age Zach Wilson how many years? About 80. 80, 80 years. He's going to look just like the Queen? Just like the Queen. Yes. Yeah, you know who, what the Queen looks like. I mean, you basically have you know the exact same like, accent as her. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all know. Yeah, I mean. All just does tie together the Queen. I've had some, yeah, I've had some actors reach out to me to, try, like, to be a dialect coach when they have to take on the role of someone from over there. For so, the yeah. Crown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't want to pay me enough, so I won't, I'm not, they've been hired ah. me yet. Yeah, but if you hey, had they to, say. They say those that can't do, coach. That's not true with you. You can do. Oh, yeah, you know I can do both when it comes to accents. Mm-hmm. And I know Ty, Ty will do well with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Did we even pick that game? Yeah, we picked it. What's the next game we got? We got a couple left. This Four guy left. stinks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is why we don't do this. What a waste of time. What are we doing? Okay, <laughs> Saints at Washington. Saints are only two-and-a-half-point favorites. Is that a bit surprising to you? 
I mean, we couldn't just hit the one right next no, to him. No, like yeah, that. yeah. You this fucking I mean? guy. Just a complete and <laughs> utter buffoon. <laughs> what is what is you going guys, on? I could play you guys like a fiddle. It's so easy. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's so easy. Oh, yeah. It's so easy. I, I knew that was coming. Okay, yeah. What do you got here? Uh, to be honest, I forget because <laughs> in Saints, Washington, um, I like the uh, Washington. Okay. I like the Saints here. Minus two and a half. All right, I like Taylor Heineke. Okay, that guy's watching film all the time. That guy's drinking a case of Bud Light all the time. Hell yeah. That guy's doing his thing, running around, winning for Old Dominion at five foot six. That oh. motherfucker's a winner, dude. And he came on the show. I like Washington. All right, hey, speaking of things that we've been talking about throughout the show, Titans Jaguars are going to be playing. And what is the line here? If I could find it on the board, it's almost impossible four to figure out where we are. Four and a half Jags are home. Home dogs. Home dogs. Four, are you surprised it's not more, Diggs? Uh, four and a half is a lot at home. Yeah. Titans lost to the Jets last week. Um, Titans have 23 guys on their injury report right now. Uh, Julio. We don't know if Julio is out. Julio's, out. Julio's out. out. A.J. Brown is potentially in, I believe, correct? Brown's in. Julio's at. What do you got here, Pat? I know what I'm picking. I know where I'm going. What are you doing? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. For the serious listeners, can you tell us what you're doing? This is uh, we're going. You know what I mean? We're going. We're going down guns of place. Yeah. Even whenever they're not wanted or anything like that, I'm taking the Jack. No, no, give me the fucking Titans. Dude. Yes. Oh, okay, good. I'm taking the Jags here at uh, plus four and a half. Wow. Right. I think they they may get their first win of the year. Say 23 people. Julio's out. 23 people in the injury report for so the Titans. Connor said. Yep. You're going against your guy Vrabes. I know. I'm not going against Vrabes. I, I don't ever want to. He's do going four. I don't want. I'm not going for anything. You I'm like just Urban more than Braves. Yeah. I'm removing wow. all my emotions. I'm taking my emotions out of this. Hey, That's not what you do. Bunker mentality. When something that yeah. r- ridiculous happens, it might be something that actually, like, you know, calms the team down, brings the team together. Like, I think they I need a fast start. Though, that could happen. Don't you think they need a fast start? Because let's say they all of a sudden they look up and they're down fourteen nothing. You could have some people like, ah, we're we're out here, man. They want to get home right then. Hey, that's down in Duval too, right? Yeah, yeah. down in Jacksonville. Yeah. 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 They'll be booing. There's going to be people in that pool, too, for her. Oh, know. yeah. Oh, boy. What does that mean? Wander- what do mean? His wandering eyes. How many times do you think he'll go for two on Sunday? I mean. Urban Meyer's coming out like this. <laughs> <laughs> for the second, third, fourth quarter. Yeah. Let's watch the game here. You know, he's doing that whole head down thing, and then uh-huh. he looks up and uh, seeing out the side of his eye. <laughs> <laughs> you think if they're down? He pulls like a Paul Pierce and comes out for the second half, like on crutches or in a wheelchair. <laughs> for what? What would his ailment be? Just, just for sympathy. Just <laughs> super just horned a up, cast. Yeah. fool probably. <laughs> just a fool. Yeah. I mean, he's got to just lean into it. He's gonna have to just go. Just, he has. He, to. he had that opportunity. He would love though, to be casted lost. up because you're not allowed to wash your fingers when you have a cast on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you are. Probably. Zito, relax. I, mean, right. Zito I love a good cast it. joke. <laughs> what's what's up? we got a couple of games left? Yeah, you do. Yeah, Lions Vikings. Who knows where it is on this board? Um, yeah, it's third middle. One. Let's go. Oh, Z just says row one, column three. Very good description, Z. Thank you very much for telling me. <laughs> oh, that. good, we're done. Now where is it? Okay, we're man, the up. Lions are nine and a half point dogs at Minnesota. Oh, what do you yeah, think, yeah. Evie? Is that too much? <laughs> well, Jared Goff just won the NFL MVP, NFL PA MVP this week, so you got to hammer the Lions. What did he do to become that? He gave a bunch of um, food donations to the people. Hey, good Detroit. for him. Yeah. Good for Jared Goff. Thank, Thank you, yeah. MJ. Thank you, Jared. A lot better than Mom's spaghetti. Yeah, he didn't open a pop-up true. spaghetti shop. This is true. Who did that? Eminem. Marshall yeah. Mathers. Oh, you're right. I did hear it. We'll, we'll get more to that later. But okay. Your, your hey. second favorite musician from Detroit. <laughs> no, no. Who's my first? You know. Who. I, you know. Bob, Bob Richie. Bob, Bob, lives in, Bob lives in Nashville. What are you talking about? No, okay. He's from Detroit. We're not talking about Bob Richie. What are we doing here? This is a football show, right? Pat, I got the Lions. Plus nine and a half. Is that right? Oh. I'm taking the Lions. Evie, it might be their first win of the year. Yes. All right. Yeah. Give me the Vikings. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good. What's our, We got one game left, Z. Is that right? Broncos. Oh, man. Broncos, Steelers, Diggs, sorry. I don't know what's going on. I think Teddy's going to play. Really? Uh, there was a report earlier today that he passed the concussion protocol from an independent doctor. The team doctors need to clear him or whatever, so it seems like he's going to play. Yeah. If an independent doctor clears him, I would assume the team doctors most likely will clear him as well. Oh, man. It's only one point. Uh, who's the one-point favorite? Which team is the favorite? The oh, Steelers, Steelers. opened as the – yeah, they're still the favorite. 
I'm a bit surprised that the Steelers are favored, I guess, because they're at home. They take a lot of that into account. But also, if the Steelers start out slow, won't they start booing that offense pretty quick? They might oh, yeah. get shut oh, out. mama, I'm in here for my life of the law, of the law. They got to get a win in Pittsburgh at some point. I mean, come on. Maybe. This feels like a – Who do you have? This feels like – Huh? I got Steelers plus one here on mine. Okay. I'm Steelers plus one now. Yeah. Okay. Then it's split. I'm taking the Steelers. This feels like a big Ben Roethlisberger week. You know, everybody's saying how terrible he is. I just watched a video of him literally dive to the ground in the middle of a play while throwing <laughs> against the Cincinnati Bengals from earlier in the year. I have no idea. That was not a trip. That was not a turf monster. That was him diving to the ground. I think he's seeing shit now potentially. I think this is a week that everybody thinks the Steelers stink. Okay, including me a couple times I've said, like, what's going on? They stink. And for whatever reason, I just feel like they win this game somehow. Okay, so I just I don't know why. I have no clue why. I love the Broncos. I love the team. This just feels like, for whatever reason, the Steelers will win this game somehow. I, I wanted to I wanted to go with you here, but when you think of the Broncos, I think of their defense, Vaughn Miller, everything else. I like the Broncos here, so I will take them. Is that all the games, Z? Yep, we got them all. Oh, perfect. That's just perfect timing. Uh, Pat, 2.30 right now. 2.35, we will have Aaron Jones' absolute stud running back nah, for the Green Bay it's Packers. 11.30. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're you're on West Coast time. We know how you, you work over there. It's all right. But we are at 2.31 right here. Everyone, please stick around. Aaron Jones will be back with us on the other side. This is Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio <laughs> Channel 82, Pat McAfee Show. football the greatest sport on earth and do you think football is the greatest sport on earth and why do you like football that's a really deep question there pat i know i think i'd get a good answer out of you though like I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that i think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it and your brain is a pretty fantastic one we've learned here over the last few weeks mm -hmm. obviously last few weeks that's it that's all the time we've learned that i think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game God, if you look at other team sports uh, uh basketball with five guys on the court i think you've seen multiple players over the years uh, maybe one player or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who 
maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough and that's not okay with you. Hey, welcome back. This is the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat. Pat is with us out in San Jose reading something. We will be joined by Aaron Jones hopefully shortly here uh, with the show. We're going to wrap it up. Hour three on the show. We had Coach yeah, Coach JB, Jason Brown, on the show earlier. He was JB, like always. Coach JB is always very uh, entertaining and enlightening. Dawson Knox, we appreciate him as well. The Bills take on the Chiefs this Sunday night. Look to get a victory. But you know what I want to talk about, Pat? I want to talk about Noom. Oh, you ever heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, ever... I, I was excited to hear about it. Yeah, so new, today's sponsor is Noom, Pat. I don't know if you know about this or not, but Noom is a digital health platform that helps empower you to take control of your health. Noom focuses on building healthy routines and habits because there's so much more to being healthy than just losing weight and dieting. Because Diggs always tells That's me, true. it's just losing weight and dieting, right, AJ? I said, no, absolutely not, Diggs. Thank Let you, me AJ. tell you. Idiot. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> It's been sneaky effective at suggesting tiny life changes that snowball into big improvements. And I want to let you in on something, Pat. I haven't even looked at this sheet yet, so who knows if I just read verbatim whatever they say. I don't know if you guys threw any bombs in there for me to try to no, get me no. in trouble. Probably not, but you know, here's how it works. You start by taking a quick assessment used what? to tailor a custom plan for you, each one of you, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. That's each awesome. one of you. Yeah, that's awesome. Then Noom connects you with a coach who's a real person trained in psychology, what? fitness, what? What? nutrition, what? What? to help what? guide and cheer you on as what? you go, guys. What? 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 And, get, what? and what? they have food what? and exercise what? trackers what? with what? lessons and what? psych tricks. What? Air quotes. Psych tricks, which have helped me reach my goals, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wrong yeah. Hey, and you know what? If you're like me and you want to build a healthy habits and take control of your health, you can get a free Noom evaluation and seven-day trial when you use Pat's link at Noom.com slash McAfee. That's Pat's link because he is the absolute picture of health, both inside and out. Once again, when you use Pat's link in the description, you get a free Noom evaluation and seven-day trial. Thank you, Noom. Appreciate you guys. I don't know what you're doing, Pat. Putting your meat well, right into the camera. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Pat's getting his, uh, wants to show off his shoulder capsules, and he's just absolutely shredded because we have a great guest coming on here right now who's waiting. Hey, Aaron, fucking say hello, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Jones. Yeah. Welcome to the show, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. What's up? What's up? Hey, Pat, you're pretty swole over oh. here. Oh. Hey, thank you. Real recognize real, Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Real recognize real when it comes to the bodies, dude. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, 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 shit. Oh. Aaron, what's up, man? How you doing? You looks like you're at the facility. What's What was your Friday like, and where's the team at right now heading into Cincinnati? Uh, so just got off the practice field. Uh, it's been good. I had meetings, walkthroughs, um, quick little fresh Friday practice, um, and walked through at the end of that, and then came in. I'm talking to you guys. Uh, but we're, we're ready. Um, we're excited to make the trip to Cincinnati. Uh, you know, it's an unfamiliar opponent, so uh, we're ready to go down there and play and just get after it, compete. Before we get to uh, you guys traveling to Cincinnati and who knows how the weather will be, obviously coming right off of that river diner, it can get a little breezy, but did you uh, did you get your soft spot a day from a couple weeks ago? Did you get that <laughs> a day you, you won? Did you get that? I did get it. I did. And if it's free, it's me. And uh, so <laughs> I, I actually uh, had, so I spent more time at home in the off season. Um, so I sent it to, to my mom's house. That's where I spent my time at. And so they got it all installed and everything. Hell yeah. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate no, you. no, don't think fluid master did that. You earned it by the way, with the way you <laughs> fly around, it. dude. Uh, you've looked amazing this year, obviously coming off of last year and a deal happening. That first week, everybody kind of looked shitty, I think. But what was the 
What do you think the big change was over the years? Because you or over the year thus far, because it looks like you and that entire offense is in quite a rhythm. Uh, definitely, just knowing that we we know we have a good team, and I think we not over complacent when we went out there week one, but um, we gotta we gotta back it up. You know, you gotta you gotta play ball too. Just because you're a good team doesn't mean a team's gonna come down there, come out and lay down for you. So um, we knew that, and we just had to come out and uh, start fast and uh, get become more physical. Um, and I think that it, that's all it was to it. And um, we knew who we are and we just got back to ourselves. Hey, Aaron, I know it, it got a lot of uh, national attention. when, you, So I, I want to make sure this guy gets the credit. Brian Engel, Flea, the trainer there who was scouring Lambeau Field till the wee hours of the night to find what your chain had had your, your father's ashes in it. And I've also read where Red Batty, who's a legendary equipment trainer, equipment guy, um, sewed a pocket into your jersey now where you can hold this. Is this true? Yes, sir. So it's on the left side right here, uh, like right over my heart pretty much. And um, I actually like the pocket. It, it's a little bit better than the necklace because it's a football, so it kind of sit on my pads. But now the pocket, it just kind of kind of tucked away, like hit it. So, uh, no, it's, our support staff, they're great here. And like you said, they, they Red Batty, he's legendary. So if you ask me, please, legendary too. Um, <laughs> yeah. They just really care about the people here. Did you ask him to do that? Did you ask him to go look for it or is this something he did? No, it was just something he did. Uh, and Flea's been helping me a lot since my, my dad's passed, so he's, like, been there for me. And uh, after the game, he came in and he was like, you know, you had a hell of a game. He said, go home, enjoy your family, enjoy your little one. He said, I'll go back out there and look for it. And I think Aaron talked about this in the off season. to your point there. He said, I love, the, I love my teammates, I love my coaches, the support staff. Everything is just first class. I don't think anybody's ever – AJ talks about how the locker room is clean every single day. It's just like this – amazing place lambo itself is a storied franchise it's like do you look in the mirror and just think to yourself like hey this is a pretty fucking crazy life i'm living right now i got the mvp of the nfl handing me the ball i play for the packers and i'm scoring like five touchdowns a goddamn game i mean do you ever get that moment to sit in there and be like this is a pretty cool life uh i do you know sometimes i'm like wow like just i'm blessed you know i i I've, 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 that was always my dream. I always vision a plan. I had a vision of playing in the NFL, but didn't know. Like, you know, you always want to be successful. You always want to have that for yourself. But, you know, when you do take a step back and look at you and think, you're like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Like, this is – people call this work. This isn't work. This is what I've been doing my whole life, like, for fun. You know, after school, instead – like, you don't want to do homework. You want to go play football. So now I get to do that for a living. Like, it's, 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 it's a blessing. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And big time Packer fan Ty Schmidt has a question. Yeah, Aaron, I noticed recently you joined uh, the same like crypto company or business that uh, Tom Brady and Steph Curry and some other guys are in. And I think that like part of your salary is going to be paid in crypto. Is that something you've always been interested in, um, or is that like a, a new thing that you're really diving head in? Uh, no. So I, I just kind of just recently got into crypto. Uh, been learning. Uh, you know, crypto's been out for a while, but I'm not. I'm not a financial advisor, so, um, I you know I gotta <laughs> gotta do my gotta do my homework on that, and you know I do have a team behind me who, who helps me out. But uh, FTS, there. So they're what they are. They're a crypto exchange. Uh, crypto exchange, and I've got the chance to partner with them, and um, so I'm doing marketing with them, and they're paying. They pay me in crypto, and then I, I also had the chance to invest with them. So. Pretty much, they're like we're, what we're doing. We're selling picks and shovels. Like, think about the gold mine when you go out west. Would you like to get to the gold? You got to have some picks and shovels. So we're selling the picks and shovels to get everybody started. Nice. Yeah, good mining gear. I love <laughs> yes, that. Sir. I think I've. Uh, it's like in the NFT world, having moving portraits is kind of like the you're you're given the wheelbarrow and the gold rush as opposed to the necessarily the gold uh do you do a lot of business shit are you a big business guy off the field i like to hear that i like to hear that there's potential depth in the financial world for you that's awesome to hear uh yes sir so uh, me and my brother uh we recently uh with this first uh with ftx start this is that was our first thing we've done but we started uh showtime ventures um, so we are looking to get into the like to more of the business side of things and investing. Let's go, dude! Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> 
Ed, you ever talk to your starting quarterback, Aaron Rodgers? Try to maybe just maybe just slide in on a few of his weird business deals. Who knows what he has going on? But also, second part of this question, I mean, like the the people. When I say weird, I mean like the people that he has access to, like just yeah. the high, like the biggest people in the world that he could be doing. Who knows? I don't know exactly what he's involved in, but what's he like what on, on game day? What the hell what does that mean? I'm, say, I'm saying the dudes. That, can be, it's probably going to be a billionaire someday. He knows all the famous people in the world, so he can join. Hey, Warren Buffett, let me in. And Warren probably said, sure, come on over, Aaron. Let's eat a let's eat a Hot Pocket or a McDonald's sandwich together. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers has a deal with Warren Buffett? I'm saying he that. could. I don't know if he is or not, but he easily could dial him up. But I, what I'm trying to talk to our guest, Aaron Jones, about <laughs> is to say, Aaron, what's he like? On game day, we see what he's like, like smiling at Mike Tom when they're they got this little weird thing going back and forth. Like, do you ever see him out of control or lose his mind? He seems like he's always there, like he always seems to be present and ready. Uh, always present and ready, like you said. I think uh, what he has is like a calm confidence. Like, you he he gives everybody else confidence around him. Like, he he'll talk to the team. He'll get he'll give you. Uh, a few words of wisdom or met, leave you with a message and he, he does that for the offense every week um, right right before like as we're warming up so I mean he he, he does so much for you he makes you believe and um, but he's just locked in he's focused but he still has that little grin that, that little smile on his face um, but he's just locked in you can see it in his eyes any difference in him in the team this year is there like a sense of urgency? Because back-to-back NFC Championship games, obviously. You have no idea how big the window is going to be for any team. I think history tells us that about every team except for the Patriots. I think for like 20 years, somehow they did whatever the fuck they did. I mean, that is <laughs> unbelievable. But is there any sense of urgency or anything like that this year with, you know, the Aarons? Obviously, you guys keep all that shit out and you're just focused on football. But is there a feeling of like this year should be the year we kind of take that next step? Um, yes, yeah, sir. We definitely think this is our year, you know, um, to take that step. We've been there the past two years, so there's no reason we, we have, we have pretty much everybody back. We have the talent in the locker room to make that, that step. We've been in, in those, in those games, so it's definitely time to make that step, and I think we were capable of it. Connor, what's up? Yeah, Aaron, there's been some talk today about some pregame music, specifically with the Colts. But for you, what's your go to to get in the zone for the game? Are we talking a little rock and roll, some worship music, perhaps? Or what are we talking about? Uh, so I got a variety. I'll start with some some gospel, play like two or three gospel songs. And then after that, it's basically hip hop. Basically, hip hop after that. Uh, my, How, are we I, I going hard, have, though, I, on the hip hop? Are we genres? going. Would you say you going hard hip hop? Are we doing like lyrical stuff, or is it? Are we going because, it's a, it's I, for little, instance, it's I'm in right now. The Christian community is coming after me right now. The Christian community is coming, right right Christian community is coming after me right now because I said there's no way that Carson Wentz listens to worship music for six hours before the game <laughs> and then goes and tries to kill himself every single play, which is how he plays. Yeah, you can't see that. That's a different opponent. You wouldn't know that. But he just he, he is a maniac on the field. I'm getting to watch it this year, Aaron. It's it's insanity to watch this guy. But I didn't expect worship music to be his his I thought you had to get going, especially in a car crash position like yours. And not that worship can't do that, but it's nice to hear that you start your day with worship and then like it makes a lot more sense that then you get into like, okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go at some point. I just yes, I, that's crazy to me. To I'm go, too mentally sure. weak at that. <laughs> no, for sure, I'm gonna have to go. It just gets the mind turned up. Who do you I, listen to? Uh, I listen to every everybody, like from Nas to Little Baby, Little Wayne, um, Money Bag Yo. Are you are you boys with Little Wayne? I know he can't. He comes to games every once in a while. Are you boys with him? No, I, I, I would like to say he's my boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I got to meet him at uh, one of the games. Uh, so, and I got to call, go on one of his like he did something for iTunes or he had like a kind of like you guys do like a podcast. Um, oh yeah, live. Live, yeah, yeah live. Uh, went live with him, and uh, so I got to do that. But haven't got to hang out with him or kick it with him or anything like that. But he said my name in a song, so hey, I'm good. You've arrived. You've Let's made go. it, man. You officially <laughs> arrived. If Lil Wayne is saying your name, like, hey, what about the Bengals? You said uncommon opponent. For somebody that doesn't know what that means, like obviously they're not in your division. They're in the AFC. You don't play them that often. Like, what kind of challenges does that bring? Um, tendencies. I, I would say probably the biggest is tendencies. Um, you try to pick it up off of film. You, you, you know, when you play these teams in your in your division, um, 
you you know what they you kind of get a beat of what they do or how they run their systems and different things like that and it's i think it's just a little bit harder when you i mean the last time we played the Bengals, i think was 2013 i was still in high school then so (laughs) it's crazy uh is that for pass blocking for you or is that for the run game as well or where does that most affect you if you don't have like a good beat or you don't really know the players as well as most other teams you play against um i i'd say probably both um protection more so you know um especially like a, a, the Bengals, they bring a, I, I think they bring a lot of pressure um, and they're bringing it from every which way. So um, when you, when you have teams like that and you're not f- as familiar with them, um, you, you can't fall asleep or you can't, you got to be on high alert at all times. Hey Aaron, last thing for me here, before we, we, we let you go, we know uh, you have a big game coming up. We talked earlier on the show about like, would teams be scared to pay certain guys? Like, say they're done with a rookie deal, and to, oh, if we give this guy fifty million guaranteed, is he still going to be the same guy? Now, you have obviously gotten a contract from Green Bay, and you're awesome. I know they had no worries. Do you ever see that, or you ever worry about that? Like, hey, what if I do? Like, you you have arrived. Like I said, Lil Wayne saying your name in songs. You got a big contract. How do you stay motivated? Uh, for me, is uh, my end goal. Uh, what my end goal is, and. Uh, I mean, I want to be a, someday. I want to be a Hall of Famer. I think that should be every uh, football player's goal who's playing in this league. If, if that's, I think that's the standard that's in the class of the best of all time. So, um, just continue to work till I get there. I mean, just because people say your name, that, that just means they know you, but that doesn't mean that you made it. Yeah. It's hey, true. getting a couple bags along the way isn't that bad, though. You know, good luck. <laughs> Not out bad there, at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Aaron. We really appreciate you coming on here, man. Good luck this Sunday against the Bengals, and good luck the rest of the year. Appreciate it, Pat. Let me see it one more time. Uh oh. Oh, come on! Good, good lighting, Aaron. Oh, Let's see. Oh, oh, see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh man. Don't do that again, Pat. Aaron, watch out. You embarrass him when you do that. You are, you're jacked, man. Good luck this weekend, man. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Aaron right, Jones, everybody. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah! Good dude. Good guy, too. Getting you, like, trying to give you some good pub, too. Get you to flex with that good lighting. Yeah, yeah. But then when he stood up, at the beginning, I only saw, like, half of his arm there. I knew it was probably going to be good. But then when he did the whole show... I should have had the hoodie on the whole time. Man. <laughs> You're putting it back on. <laughs> Should have had the hoodie on the whole time, dude. He's a freak. He is such a good dude, too. Man, I remember, oh, man. what was that, against the Cowboys? He had those four touchdowns and gave the deuces. Yep. Uh-huh. And there was a, it was a penalty. He came on, and he was like, uh, I think he said, my coaches did tell me, like, you know, that's a 15-yard penalty, so I won't be doing that anymore. Yes, sir. No, sir. Like, you know, like he yeah. was, like, very nice, upbeat or what. Like, I enjoy the hell out of guys like that who go out and do really well, too. He's know? a super positive influence, I think, on everybody. Like, the fans just love to – it's fun to root for a guy like that. I, I remember, I don't know, pre-COVID, I went to a game in Green Bay, and then I got to go in the locker room afterwards. I was talking to Jimmy Graham, and, and Aaron was there, and I'd never met him before. And I talked to him, like – and I was like, this dude is like has the most infectious, positive personality. Like he was awesome, and he, like he always is. But when he and Jamal Williams were on the team together, you talk about two just dynamos of positive energy. I think it's huge. I think that has a, a huge trickle down, not only on the players but the coaches too. Like some of these old stooge coaches that want to be mean and want to be frustrated all the time. If you see guys like that, you're like all right, man, yeah, like this is we play football because we want to have fun, right? I mean, a long season, okay, of Groundhog's Day for a lot of people. Having good energy in there to lift the spirits of others is a massive ordeal if you want to survive and have the right mentality. I think we talked to Big Bob Tunyon, and he was talking about meditating and keeping mm-hmm. good waves, you know, because the season is draining. It'll get you. Like the, the repetitiveness of it, the gruelingness of it, not for me, obviously. I'm talking about people that actually get banged up and have to go sit through two hour, three hour meetings. I did none of that. So I, I'm just strictly telling you what it was like for other people, but having somebody that can at least be like, Hey, remember, you know, we're, we're allowed to have a good time here too. Like that is a huge ordeal. I think And if you don't have one of those guys or a couple of those guys, I think you can see that affect the team long-term for real. And I don't think that gets talked about ever. Well, coaches fall into the same trap, but they forget, Hey, why did I get into coaching? Because, it's fun to win. It's fun to coach people up and see them do well. Like it's easy as a player, at least in my eyes, to think, "Hey, it's us against them." I always feel like the coaches are against you at times. Like, and you have to remind yourself sometimes, "No, they need me to do well. I help. It. We all help each other." And sometimes, a guy like Aaron Jones, those dudes can help 
remind you, I think, because I, yeah, I, that's not my personality. Is bubbly and open and fun. He's dancing everywhere. So I always appreciate it, guys like that. I took a lot of pride, you know, and hopefully bringing some energy into yeah. the conversations that I was in because everybody seemed to be much more miserable than me all the time. <laughs> uh, and I think that is, uh, I think it's a big deal. And it definitely feels if Aaron Jones is one of those guys and he got paid and he wants to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, that's a fucking treat, a uh, three P, you know what I mean? That's, uh, that's everything you're looking for, the trifecta. He's got to be a pretty big fantasy football guy, right? He oh, catches yeah. the ball oh, in the backfield, uh-huh. scores oh, yeah. a ton of touchdowns. Yeah. I was just talking to some fantasy people the other day, and yeah, you need guys to score touchdowns, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's what it's all about. It's all everything. Cooper Cup didn't score, right? No, he did no. not. And no. he was your guy, Pat? Fuck Cooper Cup, dude. <laughs> the dude's un- he caught a ball without a look, and he turned like the dude catches everything, and he takes huge shots and doesn't care, just gets up and keeps going. He's unbelievable. He's incredible. They had highlights of him. So many highlights. I've never seen that many highlights of a wide receiver that didn't score a fucking touchdown a game in my entire life. All right? He got tackled at the half-yard line one time. I mean, I love Cooper Cup, but in this particular setting that we're in, fuck him. All right? And last night is – the dude threw for 4,000 4, yards last night, one touchdown. What are we? What the fuck are we even doing? I mean, last night was a nightmare. And I love Cooper Cup. He's a stud, but fuck him. Shout out to Michael Dixon, by the way. Greatest play in the history of football last night. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. That, the, the swipe up of the ball spinning on the ground, full speed running has guys that are scary human beings trying to kill him, and he just pops that sucker up right to himself and then punts it like nothing happened. That was the most impressive thing to me right now. I know Aussie Rules football helped him out, but maybe all punters should practice this. Pat, we're wrapping this thing up. About 15 seconds. Anything you want to say to, to the Mad Dog listeners and, hey. and Chris Mad Dog Russo? Hey. Uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo's hey. show will be much better than ours. I can't thank you enough, AJ, for doing a fantastic job. Feel Good Friday is coming to an end, but Overreaction Monday is just a couple days away. Yeah. We'll see you then. Cheers. Nailed it. You nailed it, man. Yeah. It's only 12 o'clock out there for you almost, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to do, like, with my fast, you know? Like, do I eat now? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Stay on. Like, yeah, keep your body in the Eastern uh, clock, for really? sure. Well, my body didn't sleep in the Eastern clock. I, I just didn't sleep at all. I mean, it, this is going to be a problem, I think, tonight. I'm going to drink two Celsius. Why? I'm going to have any sodium and probably pass out on air. Yeah, what? then definitely eat if you're going to need both Celsius. You're gonna you're gonna have to eat beforehand. Hey, but Pat, you better watch your idle time. Connor showed me a video earlier where like you don't we don't want to have idle time. That's when bad <laughs> things happen. Well, what video are you talking about? I don't know. You showed me a video earlier today of one of our <laughs> one of our good friends just talking like you can't yeah don't oh, be alone man. Oh, are you talking to me? I'm talking to you. Oh, oh, okay. I wasn't sure which video you were talking about. I don't know if Pat's seen that video or not. But oh, just, he has. You know, hold yourself accountable, or don't let you know don't let any bad things happen to you. You got to make sure you go to dinner with people. Don't have any idle time, man. <laughs> What? What is this? I don't know. Don't worry about it. I'll send it to you. You definitely know what video he's talking about. It was from a very. I don't want to out. I don't want to say something to a guy that doesn't want. It's nothing bad. It's all he's only saying good things. Why not? You already buried him. You might as well. I didn't bury him. No, Dane Orschlovsky. Connor showed me a video, and Connor said, "Is this real?" I said, "Yeah, Dane's a good dude." That tweet's been deleted. Whatever just got sent to me, and it probably sounds like for good reason. Was it a tweet? No, yeah, it was a tweet. Yeah, no, I'll send it to you right now. This show stinks, dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, look new? at these things, man. They got like, they got all these little tiny oh, things. Wow. So, do you have to show anything to get it delivered? Or do you have just an ID? ID has to get verified through the website. They do a whole thing. You have to get it gets regulated and all this stuff. But I mean, I just it just showed up in a Tesla. Wow. I mean, what are we yeah. doing? This is 2050. This is fucking awesome. Wait, was this self-driving Tesla? <laughs> no, there was a lady oh. in there. She was. She was uh, it would be awesome if a Tesla was just driving around <laughs> dropping off dope, though. This yeah. Open back door. Time. Elon Musk, would have, he, when he does figure that out, that'll be his uh, pinnacle. I, I guess I'm allowed to just go blow fucking cannabis right in somebody's face down here. Is oh, that yeah. Cool? If you yeah, want that's to. That's business in California. Yeah. That's how it works. They're over, I think, what's the smoking, the 18? 21. 21. I don't think it works that way with weed, though. Yeah. You can't Keep just your mask on. They technically I don't can. Think you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can. No, yeah, you can go blow it in anyone's face. Yeah, you can. Try it. Even just, babies. Only way you know is if you try. This is a good question. How did uh, oh. handle temptation? <laughs> I did see that video. I did not. <laughs> Well, you, just, you talked about idle time. You didn't know what to do with yourself, so that's why I was started thinking of Dane. I'm like, oh, well, you've been talking to Dane then. Let me tell you about last night. So I get in. 
the flight was supposed you want to talk about idle time the flight was supposed to be about i don't know seven hours shorter than it was <laughs> Jesus. so we uh we must have caught a heavy headwind you know what i mean that trip took a long time i was up there a long time so the expected arrival time, I think, was much different than the actual arrival time. So I did wa- I missed the first quarter. Massive thanks to the boys sending me text updates. Nice. Shout, out. Shout out to you guys. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, and then I finally get over here, and I didn't have time to go stop by a dispensary because I'm already missing the first quarter. So I rushed to this hotel. 14 Lambos in the front. Can't valet it. One-way street, basically. But there is a valet. But you can't really get to it because there's so many fucking Lamborghinis in the way. Okay, so I'm driving in a Nissan Armada. Ooh, all right, I'm showing up nice. in this thing. It's and it's game. rattling. You know, I got a little Mac Miller going <laughs> in that thing when I show up. Hey, valet, excuse me. Need to do this thing. They come over. It's a whole scene. I'm staying here. I'm in sleeveless. There's like $4,000 suits hopping out of these cars. That are in. And this is – I'm in – Jeans and a sleeve, I mean, a tank top. I look like white trash city coming into this place in Eastern Armada. <laughs> hey, fucking show park this thing, will you, please? And then I go, you go up three floors to get into the lobby. Obviously, you got to go up an elevator, but only a certain amount of people allowed on the elevator and masks have to be on. So I wait in a line to get into an elevator to get to a lobby. In the line, it seemed like there was a lot of people coming into this building. I know there's, I guess, the nicest club in San Jose in this restaurant. It's like a really high hoity-toity restaurant club in there. Whatever the case, watch the whole game. Game ends 8.35-ish, you know, local time. Dispensary ends 9 p.m. Oh. Okay, 9 p.m. So I had, it was a 10-minute drive. I had to get my car out of valet. I know it was deep in the weeds of the valet. I sprinted to the car. Drove in the dispensary, got in there a minute before closing time. Christian greets me in a beautiful way. Pat, thank you so much for coming to my store. I would have kept it open for you. I got in there in the nick of time, and then I come home, eat myself into a state of cloud 50, try to fall asleep. That's what I do with my idle time. I don't know what Orlovsky's doing. I've not seen the entire video, but that's what I try to do with my downtime. I mean, I think that's a healthy use of your idle time, but why did you have to drive there tonight and also deliver more today? So I got the delivery done while I was driving to it because I didn't think I was going to make it. Oh, okay. So I Ah. thought the delivery was going to come tonight. The only option after I put in my card, the ID got uh, regular or okayed and everything, was for this morning, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So I just, when I got there, Christian asked me, I said, I have a delivery coming tomorrow. Let's keep that coming. And then I'm going to max out what I can buy here tonight, too. So <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. And my guy Christian helped me out. And you're going to have to, and you're going to eat everything you can all today because you can't take any of it home. Of course. This is just like the London trip. I'm yep. bringing for friends. I'm buying for friends. I would never, ever travel across state lines with this stuff. That is not legal. So look for me to potentially be floating above the Shark Tank tonight on Smack. <laughs> that's a great teaser. I, let's, let's knock out some of these phone calls, Nick. What about Chris in Oregon? What do you, what do you have, bud? What, Chris? What's up, Chris? What's up, BJ? What's up, bud? How's it going, guys? Uh, hey, I just got a question. Is that Boston Stooge still think Mac Jones is going to win Rookie of the Year? Yes, absolutely. Do you really? Yeah. Gun to your head. Yeah. There's four, we're four games into this thing. If he still goes on and wins 11 or 12, yeah, absolutely. Okay. What you know, do you there's think? a guy named Najee Harris, right? Oh, geez. oh yeah. yeah. How's he been this year, Tony? He's actually been really good. It's the team that hasn't been great. There it is. Yeah. It's tough if your team isn't good to win the rookie of the year, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to win a lot of games. Jamar, Jamar, who else in the running? Jamar Chase, yes. I'd say, is yeah. the front runner right now. Absolutely, right? Mac Jones is actually – Mac Jones and then Jamar Chase is the uh, odds-on favorites. Yeah. Does uh, does um, Joe Burrow get comeback player of the year? Does it count if he didn't miss the whole year last Dak year? Dak Prescott's Dak's getting comeback player of the year. Yeah. Dak Prescott is good, man. That dude is a really good football player, and he seems to be a very, very good leader. He's fun to watch. Fucking right, dude. Fucking right. He's a great football player. To be honest, I didn't hear anything that just happened. I just got a message from somebody that wants me to come see their grow show out here. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Grow yeah. show. So, so there you go. Now you know what now we know what you're gonna be doing with your idle time. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I wish I had more idle time so I could go see this thing. I got some pictures sent to me. It looks like we got some big old fucking Amazon like marijuana for a girl. Oh, damn. You know, but I, I gotta oh, work. That kind of okay, and show. Najee Harris needs to get to work as well. That guy we need him to get a win this weekend. Hey, what a what a good day it would be for somebody that has a giant grow operation to have you like to host you as a guest and just watch you walk around the tank top blown away at everything like that would be the pinnacle of that person's career i feel like 
I don't think so. I'd assume I assume there's much higher up in the weed totem pole. Well, what, Seth what, Rogen? Who walk else? Around. Uh, I don't know. Wiz, Willie. Snoop. Willie Nelson. Yeah. I mean. Hey, what about Vinny in Michigan? Vinny in Michigan. Know, sounds like when, smells, when you're talking sports, Vinny, though, if you're just talking sports, you're probably the top of that. Yeah, Vinny in and Michigan. Like, what do you think? Is Pat the top when it comes to sports? Yeah, like Wiz and Snoop and are in a different category. Same with Willie Nelson. He might be on hold. What do you think, Vinny? Vinny in Michigan. You there, bud? Yeah, Snoop's the OG there. Yep. Yeah. But rap category. You know? Yeah, Vinny's not there anymore. It's all right, Vin. Nice try. Sorry, uh-huh. you stayed on hold for that one. I feel like I could handle myself with them, by the way. For sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. What, do you, did you doubt yourself? I watched a live feed. Uh, Wiz Khalifa was live on his Instagram as he's making this album, I think. And there's moments where he makes it, like, muted. And then he has a lot of the time no comments on. So it's almost like the show Big Brother, but just with Wiz. Huh. It's very fascinating. <laughs> i seen him smoking. They smoke a lot. I have a lot of respect and credit for the amount of smoke that they smoke, but... At this point in my stage of my career, other than my wife, I think uh, I fear nobody in that particular <laughs> no, no. realm. Oh yeah, I fear that's nobody. good. Hey, Chris in Texas, Chris, what's going on, man? We have one more Michael after that. Make sure we get to you guys. Hey, what's going on, Pat? Boys, AJ, how are y'all today? Oh, we're good, that's man. Good. How you doing? Good. Hey, good. What, what part really... of Texas you in? There we go. Uh, cool Corpus question. Christi, Texas. Corpus, Corpus Christi. Christi. I know y'all talked about it a couple months ago. When the when that fan jumped over the uh, into the minor league baseball and almost oh, yeah. like started oh, the yeah, fight, yeah. I remember y'all oh, talked about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Really, I wish of I got done that in the game that Pat played in. But what else you got, man? What's happening? Hey, so I, was come gonna, out I was gonna ask a a question about the Cowboys, but somebody asked a question about wrestling earlier, and it reminded me AEW is gonna go to Indianapolis. Pat, are you or one of the boys going to go over there and smack Cody Rhodes in the mouth for insinuating that you were begging for a job? Yeah, I don't know what that was all about with Cody Rhodes. You know, I, I mean, I've I've never met that man. I have a lot of appreciation for everything they've been able to build over there. Anytime you can build a show, a brand. Wait, what did he say about you arenas. first? Though? What did he say about you? Uh, he said in an interview, like a... Uh, this was shortly after. This was when Shaq was wrestling, I think. Yep. He he made a comment that was like, he thought that I was potentially begging for a job with AEW or something like that. Huh. And I just kind of wrote it off like, hey, it's wrestling, baby. You got to do what you got to do. But I think the wrestling people, they kind of ran with it. They thought I was potentially doing that. And then I got some messages from people at WWE, not higher up, but people are wrestling like in the WWE. They're like, you going to AEW? And I was like, I've never talked. To anybody over there, but I enjoyed, I appreciated, you know, it's wrestling. You do what you say, whatever you got to say, but it would be cool, a little invasion angle. Oh, uh, I mean, you'd have to get that signed off from Vince, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, I would assume I'm a big, and I think my history has told this, I'm a big ask for forgiveness. You know what I mean, guys? Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. But that would cause quite a fucking situation. If I'm like, just <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would cause quite a, I think, you know what I mean? Like, be who you can afford to be, all right? And I am nowhere near the top of a pecking order ever in the history of WWE or in the WWE right now. But if they were in Indianapolis and I was to show up and it became a scene, I don't I don't know how it would go. I think I would potentially – I don't know how it would go. That would be awesome. It would be sweet to think about. For it'd sure. be, I think it would be good for, for both organizations. The last call here, Michael in Oklahoma. I mean, I mean to be clear, one show is very, very good, Okay. It's about a million viewers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Another one gets like three, four million. So, like, I think it would be good for everybody, all parties involved. And I think it's great for wrestling fans as a whole. But it is nice to be on the premier yeah. sports entertainment program. And don't ever get it fucking twisted, no matter how loud that Bay Bay sounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Out, and it's getting louder somehow. Hell, yeah. It's good. It's good for everybody. I think it lifts everybody up. Michael, Oklahoma, what's happening, bud? Rising tides. Boom. Gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to, to speak with you guys. First and foremost, uh, you, you referenced it a lot on the show, AJ. Shout out to you, Mr. Hawk, for your time in Cincinnati as a famous fan, diehard, lifelong, 30 years. Uh, very appreciative of your time in Cincinnati. Yes. Wish you could have stuck around and could have had more success with you with you there. My question is actually about the game this week. Obviously, I think it's uh, Joe Burrow's biggest game so far in his very young <laughs> and I think very promising career. Can you kind of talk to me a little bit uh, about 
kind of the mindset in the locker room this week, Mr. Hawk. As a defensive leader, are you in Burroughs here this week? Kind of talk to him about going up against one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in Aaron Rodgers. Is that more of the offensive side of the ball, those those key position guys, guys like Jamar Chase, trying to avoid talking with him? Or is that coaching and then kind of like what's the attitude, what's the mind frame uh, this week and in the locker room? Love the show. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks, guys. All right. Appreciate the call, Michael. Is he asked if, if I'm in Joe Burrow's ear. Pat just chugged the whole water pretty much. <laughs> Jesus. That Fiji water that, that, that Fiji water that cost twenty seven dollars that Pat just took off the nightstand. That was one liter. Oh, it was the big boy. Wow. That's impressive. Holy shit. I won't be passing out tonight because of dehydration. <laughs> uh-uh. Do you think Joe so that guy Michael, I believe, do you think Joe Burrow thinks about Aaron at all when he thinks about playing the Packers? He's not playing Aaron Rodgers, he's playing the Packers defense. Joe Joe Burrow, by all accounts, is an absolute savage, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. everybody's uh-huh. saying? Yes. He ain't worried about Aaron. He's worried about slicing and dicing that defense that just got Jalen Smith and Russell yeah. Douglas out of West Virginia. We forgot to mention Jalen Smith signed with the Packers. Is he going to be starting this week? Do we know? Have you heard uh, anything? Asked rap, rap Sheet yesterday. He said probably not. He might get like you know a couple snaps, but no, he's probably not going to start. Why not? I mean, I don't know. I guess you got to learn the scheme a little bit more. Yeah. Got to learn a little bit more of the scheme. But he once he learns the scheme and he's in, they're gonna. I'm sure he's gonna get a good chunk of time. right? Yeah, you would think. As long as he's healthy. Or good. I mean, what kind of a surprising release from the Cowboys to, to let him go when mm. they did, especially since they owe him money and all that. But I, yeah, I mean, Big Mike. Hey, Big Mike Petty like that. Like if you don't like him, I'll cut him. I mean, I don't know. Is Big Mike making the call there? Like I don't. The head coach usually doesn't make the call to, to fire and bring guys in. It's usually the GM and owner. Yeah, but I would assume Big Mike has a relationship with Jerry that's different than the ones in the past. That's why they brought in Big Mike, right? Because everybody's saying Jerry had too much power and the coach needs to have a little bit more say. Would Big Mike be laissez-faire on that situation and let Jerry do what he got to do there? I don't know. I, I, I'm i not sure exactly how that it's, – it's not like an indictment on Jalen. Isn't it more of like, hey, we love what we have here and we want to make sure these guys get time and we're, we don't – we're almost trying to like work you into the lineup and get you the snaps you want and we're still not getting you, the snaps as, you as many snaps as you want. That's what I took from it. I mean, that's how they laid it out for sure. You know, they, they said it wasn't him, it was us, yeah. right, which is classic. But also they're still paying him like $16 million or yeah, something like that, yeah. which a lot of people would say there has to be something you can – some package you can keep him around. But maybe they did come to an agreement where Jalen was like, I would like to play. It's not just about money. I would like to be able to earn my keep around here. And maybe that's why yeah. it happened. I don't know. I, I think we'll have to learn more as we go. I, I tell you what, if you're Jalen, like, sure, I'm sure he was a bit shocked, a bit surprised. But then he's like, oh, wait, I get- – I'm going to go sign with the Packers. Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback. I went from one really good team to another really good team. Okay, I'm okay with this now. And hopefully he finds a role and he gets more time. I believe. Hey, Dallas. Dallas is a big city. It's a good time. But, I mean, have you ever heard about Green Bay? This place is awesome. (laughs) Uh, I'm pretty sure LaFleur was one of his coaches at Notre Dame, too, which is a big reason why he wanted to sign with the Packers. You're right. He was. So there we go. Many reasons why it it should turn out pretty good for Jalen and for the Cowboys. I mean, Micah Parsons has come on and been a stud. For the Cowboys, Van Der Esch, they want to keep him in all the time too, don't they? Yeah, yeah but Micah, they kind of have moved the uh, edge rusher more so than middle linebacker. That's I believe there's another weird. rookie that they drafted who's also playing well. The kid from uh, LSU, Jabril Cox, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I, Jalen probably, even though he doesn't want to leave Dallas, I'm sure he loves the relationships he has created. He played like half the snaps, didn't he? Or not even half not of the snaps so far. Think. I'm sure he wants to be in there all the time. And, and he probably I only saw a chance. few of the plays, and I hope those aren't reminiscent of the plays he's going to do for the Green Bay Packers <laughs> yeah. on Twitter. But yeah. I think we have some breaking news, don't we? We have some breaking news there, Zito? Let's see it. Cam, Cam Inman. 49ers Jimmy Garoppolo is not practicing again today. Say hey, Trey, starting Sunday. <laughs> oh, is that Bruce? Hey, Did Bruce hey. like that? Trey, he resigned Sunday. How will he do? Say hey, Trey, Sunday. How he do? Say hey, Trey, he on Sunday. Say hey, 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 hey. One week removed from Kyle. Wait, is this a guarantee? Backup. Is this a Kyle guarantee? Bezier, Shanahan? I basically came out and said that's why the guy's number two overall, or our second, our second string quarterback, because of how he potentially looked. I would assume this week they have molded the offense around Trey. Who knows what that's going to look like? Excited to see Kyle Shanahan utilize Trey for what Trey is, as opposed to what Jimmy is, and as opposed to Trey in Jimmy's offense with a couple packages. Uh, Bruce Calf. I guess it's 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 a little bit. Too much. It could be a real pain in the ass. And now we got Trey Lance starting, AJ. So what if, if Trey comes out and lights it up, is he the starter moving on, moving forward? Um, this is fascinating. This is crazier than the uh, Chicago situation for sure because yeah. Kyle Shanahan and Lynch both said that 
when Jimmy's healthy and playing, we win games. And stats say that. Like, stats prove that when Jimmy's playing and he's healthy and the team isn't, you know, getting kicked out of their stadium and everything like that, they win games. They always, they've been very consistent with the fact that it's when Jimmy gets hurt that we stink. So we need another quarterback. What happens when Jimmy's healthy and the other quarterback came in when Jimmy wasn't healthy and had success? Or what happens if he struggles a little bit? When do you know? When do you not? That's the big, especially if they win somehow against the Cardinals, which I'm not saying they are. But if they somehow get into this whole NFC West conversation, which is going to start to heat up here as the league uh, as the year continues to go on, I mean, that's going to be a focal point of a lot of conversation over there. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like, let's say they go out there and they win and Trey plays well, then – I would assume Jimmy will be ready next week, especially if it's a bruised calf. It's not a pulled calf. They're going to have a decision to make. I guess it's a good problem to have if you're Kyle Shanahan, though, right? I mean, I guess it's a good problem to have. They probably handled it internally with absolute full transparency. That's what Lynch said he was with Jimmy. That's what Shanahan said he was with Jimmy. They didn't tell him who they were drafting. We're drafting a guy. This is why. You're in our plans. We're going to keep you around, even though everybody, including us, thought that they were going to trade him because of the money that they would have saved. They kept him around. So I'd assume Jimmy has all the trust in the world, as does Trey. Uh, real quick, before I get out of here, are you wearing are you wearing cleats? I'm wearing my, my full costume, as you said, from when I played the Ryder Cup. I got spikes on here, buddy. Oh, you got oh, 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 Jesus. Fell. Almost fell there, too. But, yeah, I got my spikes on. Of course. Why wouldn't I? Look. Bam. I got, I've, had some, I've had great grip out here on this rubber flooring. You have. <laughs> that is amazing. I thought I heard a couple little, you know. They're, when not, you metal. they're, not, they're not metal. I'm not Bryson. I'm not wearing metal spikes. But, they're the you know, they're actually golf, golf shoes. No, but it didn't sound like a pair of J's because you were moving with them. You know, J's are trying to walk like this. You don't crease them. You've been just cracking around with those things. <laughs> that might have been his puffy no. jacket swishing around yeah. into the microphone. Jeez, that too, yeah. Might have been that. Hell <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, AJ, you did a great job. I appreciate you doing this, man. Hey, thank you. Yeah, it was fun. It's fun to come in here. I appreciate you uh, having me in here in person. It's fun to see the boys in person and, and sit here and let them just – annihilate me right to my face instead of through the uh, computer yeah i do like that our crew break? i do like that our crew isn't cowards by the way you uh -uh. threw the camera you there they will say things to you that's <laughs> that's, right. that's good stuff that's mm -hmm. what our crew has you know what i mean yeah they're, they're humans we have normal like real interactions like people have but we just have it on the air well the idle time is a part that people really have to focus on um, with that being said, it would be nice to be around you sometime. You know, you and me in the studio at some point. Yeah, we, we should do, do that, that sometime where you're actually in town. Yeah, but then you would never come if I wasn't. But where would I, the problem is, though, like, there's no room. I would have to sit, like, in one of the gamer chairs. Where am I going to sit up here? No. We give you a desk because yeah. I'm, I'm about sick of you fucking with my desk to begin with. I mean, I don't with, want so. a baby desk right here next to you. I'll, you I'll, probably sit low, I'll be like Cicely Alno sitting, like, three feet below you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will look down on you for sure. We'll get you a little smaller. you got to have to healthy you in that particular fashion. But we'll give you a good desk. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was, are we going um, to go to the Super Bowl for like, and be like on uh, Radio Row and all that? Uh, that's trying to be figured out right now, actually, because FanDuel has a deal with the NFL and Sirius has a deal with the NFL. So I feel like we're going to be in Radio Row or whatever. I just We're going to be doing it, I think, differently. I've been asked for a couple ideas, and I think we have the idea. I hope it works. Oh, I'm looking forward to hearing that. I think it'd be fun, man, for their – like, thinking of Radio Row in a normal sense, to me, seems like a little bit of a nightmare. But to do it here with you guys would be awesome. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, we're, we're going to actually uh, – Where is the Super Bowl this year? L.A. LA. LA. Oh, oh, so far. Uh -oh. We're going to just talk about what ra what's happening at Radio Row, <laughs> mostly. Yeah. Oh, that's the best. I, thought, I figured you are going to probably rent, like, Dan Bilzerian's house that he rented for a while out there. It'd be great. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of people that rent houses out in L.A., All right, like everybody. I'm does. saying his is, like, amazing. I've seen the house that he rented for a while. No, but I think at Radio Row, we're, we're potentially going to have an actual setup, allegedly. I'm not okay. sure. None of this has been finalized. There's been some conversations and some meetings about it. But allegedly, we're going to get, like, a real setup. I want cameras that go out. You know what I mean? That shoot out. I want them to shoot out. And I would like us, you know, hopefully Aaron will come and maybe we'll have some other – uh, people stop by and Drew we Brees, just touch for time. every other show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Pack and be like, oh, look, there's the guy that the Toxic Table has talked shit on a thousand times. Yeah, Come get on over here. here. Get over here. We need a little mm -hmm. security here for fucking uh, Ty as this guy is going to want to rip his fucking head off. Who is it? Lou Holtz? Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sirianni, if, hey, if Lou Holtz wants to fight, I'm okay with Dude, that. Dude, if Lou ripped <laughs> your throat out. What do you think Lou would say to Ty? Honestly, if, if Lou walked uh, up, what if we were on air and Lou just uh, walks uh, up to our set and taps Ty in the shoulder, what would he say? 
Thank you for your service. <laughs> Notre Dame just finally cut me a check for play like a champion today. So thank you, young man. You've you've done a lot for my family. I love you. All right. That's probably not how it'll go. That's what he would say. I mean, Lou is a class act. I think that is how it would go. Don't you? No. Lou will come up there, smack him right in the fucking mouth, and then do a newspaper trick right in front of him and say, I'm a magic man. Now you see me. (laughs) Now you don't walk off. Hey, you know the ideal situation is this mic is flopping around? Um, What would be one of my favorite things is if Sirianni walks up, he taps Ty on the shoulder, and Ty turns around, and he just punches him square in the nose, (laughs) and Ty is out cold. He gets that AJ Hawk nose. Ooh, that would right be the right. greatest thing for the show, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. And yes, your nose. So sure. Tough, you need to toughen that nose up too. That'd be good for all of us. You yeah. Know. How does he do that? Just run into a wall or what? How'd you do you that? You a with bleeder your nose? or a scabber? Just let Sirianni punch him in the nose. Are you a bleeder or a scabber, Ty? What do you question? I, I think, think you're I'm, a bleeder. I think I'm more of a. I mean, typically, bitch made cats are bleeders. So <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a scabber per se, but you know, we'll see. Coach hey AJ, CJ. what's up? I'm doing this publicly, so you have to say yes. Oh, but no. JB, what's your number? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it my way. That's fine. Send mine his way. I'm not a big "I'll give your number away" guy. Actually, I hate when people give my number away to people. I get very upset about it. So I figured I'd ask you, but I tried to call you earlier. You didn't answer. Jeez. So. No, you Facetime me during one of the breaks. I saw. Is that what you wanted? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What is it? Is pick that up it? your phone, dude. Pick up your phone. I'm here trying to do a show. What are you talking about? Why am I answering phones? I lock it. Like Mitt's dad, I lock it in the drawer as soon as I check in for work. Hell yeah. My, my computer's about to die. It's a shame. All right. Good. What's the show anyway? We're out of here, guys. Appreciate everybody watching, listening. Thank you, AJ. Thank, Thank you, Pat. You, Good AJ. luck to Mike on SmackDown. You, Actually, you make me want to watch SmackDown luck, because Pat. you have to ingest a lot of F. edibles before you go on there to get them out of, because uh, you can't take them back with you. So tonight should be fun on SmackDown. Yeah, it, it might be like that London trip home. Hell yeah. Tonight. Hell yeah. Like Chuck. Chuck can play golf about. all day long when he eats those suckers. <laughs> Love Chuck Pagano. Chuck's floating around the golf course out there. He's <laughs> just floating around. Feeling good. Well, that's the show. Appreciate you, Pat Petrie. Appreciate the boys. We'll be back on Monday for Overreaction Monday yeah. after hopefully all of my picks hit. That's the show. Pat McBee Show. We'll see you Monday.